Today, we are going to be talking about what Nintendo can do to buy some time. By all accounts, this is something they're going to need to do. Yeah. If the reports are true that the Switch 2 had a little internal Play. shift in、yep. the calendar to、mm -hmm. the first quarter of next year, the thing hasn't been announced, so it's not technically a public delay. Yes. But it might be different timing than they were expecting. I think so. So there might be a little fire drill happening at Nintendo right now of like, oh, we need to keep things go going and a moving. For a couple months longer than we thought. So, what kind of plates can we spin up to、mm -hmm. keep people engaged with us? Yeah, and when we were at Nintendo, these kinds of things would happen.、Yeah. Where it was sort of a like, everybody get your ideas in because we have a sort of company wide situation that's serious, that needs to be addressed. And the pressure is put on the people that are there to come up with these ideas.、Right. On what to do and how to you know, keep Nintendo relevant and keep people talking about Nintendo.、Um, Nintendo is a really powerful brand, but it's so easy for anyone in Nintendo who has seen this to fall from a high place very quickly. So I, I do feel like they might be a little bit stressed.、Um, and yeah, based on you know, all of our experience working there and dealing with situations like this, I can. I can see the pressure building a bit over at Nintendo. So, we have each come up with our own plans. We have. As if Mr. Furukawa himself <laughs> tapped us on the shoulder, said, Oh, Krista san, <laughs> please come up with the plan to keep the good momentum going、yes. until, I don't know, end、XY、of March yeah, next year or something. Yeah, the timeline. So, we've each done that. I'm going to tell you right now, mine is extremely good. Oh, I think they I should do. I think they should do all of this to the letter. <laughs> You're、I、just giving it away now. It's, it's great. Well, we're not far from it, but I'm just going to say mine's very good. You're just giving it away because you're, you're, they're not paying you anymore. No. And、but I think they just, should do it. They're just give, you're giving away all your great ideas to Nintendo. As the all important consumer myself now, I would be very happy <laughs> if they did exactly these things yeah, that I'm about yeah. to lay out. I very quickly for mine, I, I, it did not take me a long time to come up with these、sure. strategies, ideas, whatever.、Um, Mother three. Done. <laughs> Localize it. Get it out there. Done. But、um, yeah, sometimes you o k n when w you get asked by an executive to, to come up with an idea, it can be a struggle. Yeah. But these were not struggle ideas.、Um, yeah, I think. So I think they, ha they, they have. They have a lot of a things lot of they can do. Right. Are they going to do them? Who knows? Are they so back, boxed into a corner with what they think they can do? I think that's the key、mm, that's consideration. That's the key thing. But、that. we'll get into that shortly. Yeah. Interesting discussion coming right up. Yes.、Um, but first of all, welcome、What? back to you. Where'd I go? What? You. What do you mean? You were on a great vacation last week. I went on a little vacation. That's nice.、Uh, you know, I, still, I was still made my usual appearance on the podcast and was, <laughs> was doing stuff. Yeah, I went back to Quebec. Yes.、Um, you know, we went last summer. To do the Disney Dreamlight Valley showcase. Yeah, that, that was, was both our first time. First time there. Beautiful. And、so、I really、nice. fell in love with it and I wanted to go back. And while we were there, I kept watching this Anthony Bourdain episode、yeah, of, when so、he, good. of when he went to Montreal and then he took the train to Quebec City、right. and kind of hung out there for a while. So I was like, I'm gonna do exactly that. That's awesome. Which was super fun. A bit of a different weather situation,、mm. obviously, from August a bit to now. I was like, I was like, I, I just need to avoid the really hardcore winter stuff. Yeah. And, and Anthony Bourdain did it in the hardcore winter. He、event. did, yeah. And it, it like, looked、I'm, pretty hardcore. I was like, I'm not cut out for that. Yeah. I mostly did. There were a couple days where it was kind of cold and snowy, but for the、right. most part, it was great. It was a lot of fun. And you con- ate really well. I continued to be very impressed and fascinated with this、yes. part of the world. Yeah. And I'm really glad I had a chance to go back. It is so cool that it has like this old city, like very sort of、right. ancient city vibe. Right. Which is hard to find in the States. But if you,、yeah. just, if you just pop over to, to Canada, which is not very far from where、right. we are, a very easy flight,、right. you can get that sort of like old city, medieval city. You would never think that this is just hours away from us. Exactly. Old California. Yeah. How many plates of poutine did you eat? I actually only ate one poutine, but it was an outstanding poutine. So I felt very satisfied. Sa yes. <laughs> the poutine is so good. I don't think it would have been a good idea to eat that. Daily. I mean, I would want、yeah. to. Anything with gravy, I'm <laughs> like, it's readily I'm、so、available though. Why isn't that, that become a thing here? I don't, I don't know. know. We should start a poutine seria. Poutine seria. Poutine seria. I'm going to think about that one. All right.、Uh, well, anyways, welcome back to you. Thank you. Thank you.、Uh, 
Um, the other thing that's happening this week is... The eclipse? The eclipse. You said that you didn't care about it at all. It's, it's actually... No, we it, record this on a Monday. Right. The eclipse is... There's a lot of things happening on a the Monday. The eclipse is literally happening. One of them is important. One of them isn't. The one that's not is the eclipse. Oh. The eclipse is happening right now, actually. Like, literally so, as we speak. So, maybe you... Can, can you sell me on why you think this is cool? It's one of those, like, you know, planetary They said phenomenons. another one's not happening for, like, 20 years. Yeah. But here... Where we live, you can't really see it's it. It's not the full eclipse. Right. Strike one. Strike two. <laughs> you can't look. You at can't it. look. Don't you, look at it. Please don't, don't look. Don't look at it. Please do not look directly at the sun. Your eyes. You can get these weird little glasses, but now right. everybody's like, "Oh, be on the lookout for fakes." So it's like, "Oh, oh my gosh, am ouch. I gonna, I'm gonna burn, burn out your burn retinas? my eyes out with some fake glasses?" And then strike three is like, "Well, the the way to do it is this: you poke a pinhole, and then you look at this little dot." I'm like, "I'm not wasting my time." I with do this. remember doing that in school as like a little kid. Well, that's fine if you're in like the second grade. Yeah, I think I was in the second yeah. grade, something like that. But I mean, it is. We're like, not interrupting the all important act of podcasting to go look at a little dot. And you're like, "No, I hate this. It's stupid." I'm like, "Okay." Maybe we can go look for roly polies later too. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I love roly polies. <laughs> you poke them and they turn into a little ball Great. and everything. Fascinating. Um, all right. But, but the thing that does matter yes. is this is the day that the online stuff for the Wii U and the 3DS goes kaput. I know. It's sad. It's over. Yeah. We've been kind of counting down informally to this day for about a year now. We Has it been that long? They, I mean, they announce it super long in advance to the point like where I lose well, track. Think, yeah. So I do remember we 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 do have well it's a little late for you guys now but <laughs> uh, we did put out like several videos on the online games that you should be downloading if you haven't already. Well, that's long it. past. Yeah, now yeah. you're now it's over. Right. And then now we we you, if you didn't play your last game of Mario Kart or whatever your Splatoon, sorry, too late. But yeah, that's it. That's the end, I guess. I of mean, this era. On one hand, I'll be honest, like I was not playing a lot of online Wii U and 3DS games recently. Yeah. But on the other hand, there are that that is the generation where more Nintendo games started to have more significant online features, right. and there are a lot of things that are just lost. For example, I'm, I'm wearing the Splatoon shirt today. Splatoon One, you know, if you talk to anybody who kept playing Splatoon One, they're like, this had a great community, still was going strong. The Miiverse drawings for Splatoon One were some of the most impressive things I've ever sure. seen in my life. Sure, and if that's the version of Splatoon that you like to play, you just can't. Um, you know, Smash Brothers Smash. has certain stages that you can't get. Same with Mario Kart Seven. Mm -hmm. All of the Mario Maker levels. This is perhaps. I, I think the biggest this loss, is sad, they're just yeah. gone. And I, it was so cool that people in the community were trying to clear those last couple yeah, ones. Yeah, I think they did it. And that, I mean, that was just, you know, the human spirit I at, its, it is, at its finest. It, it really is. It's like when you are about to lose something is when you realize how much you might miss it, you know? Right, right. So it is sad that all of these things are just gone. And this is now our future. I mean, at some, I hate to... I hate to break it to anybody, but someday we're going to be having this conversation for about, Switch. about Nintendo Switch. Yeah, yeah. And you start to think ahead of like, all what's going to be lost with that, and then when that eShop eventually shuts down, it's like, it's kind of dark to think yeah. about. Maybe we should focus on our impending doom via the eclipse instead. <laughs> it's, a, it's a more fun thing to think about, but yeah, it, it is. It is sad. It is sad. It, it definitely marks the end of something, which right. is always sad. You know, hopefully the. The, the thing that you have now can match up to that, but it doesn't make it, it, it doesn't like take away from the significance of this moment in time ending. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is, it was fun to watch the community sort of, um, you know, make that last rallying effort to do all the things. I mean, we did, we played Mario Kart 7 with yeah. our community. It was nice that everyone sort of, Made it a little bit of an effort to celebrate it or to just use it one last right. time. So that was that was kind of nice. I, I have been hearing about this like fan made. I saw that. Like yes, so you pseudo can do that. pseudo online some way some way to still do it. So I guess where there's a will, where there's a way. Yeah, yeah. I have. A, I did see this weekend this kind of strange revisionist history popping up around how like oh the Wii U was actually peak Nintendo and I all know, that. And I saw that too. Part of me was I couldn't tell. Are these people being serious, or is this just you know like a the, the classic kind of the classic Twitter engagement baiting that we've been seeing more and more of right. every day? So I chose I chose to sit that one out, but I, I thought I that was too. 
Yeah. Interesting. Again, it's it's. I mean, maybe it was the peak if you were twelve years old when that happened. Yeah, I mean, it, it can mean different things to you given where you were in your life. You sure.、Know? So you could cloud your objective judgment of something with personal things, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yes, it is the it is a human thing. Like when something goes away or when something is feels like the end, there's a tendency for all of us humans to like want to hold on to it. So yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There's yeah, yeah. that.、Um, another thing that could potentially be like a, a a beautiful nostalgic memory is the Mario movie. They're taking that away too. No, 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 no. But I'm just saying, like it's been、oh. a year. It has been. It has been, it, it has been exactly one year. We certainly had just the most fantastic time. Um, with all things Mario movie related, I mean, we went to a movie premiere for the、sure. first time. We saw Mr. Miyamoto. Well, speak for yourself. You didn't like it. I've been to movie premieres. You have? Oh, yeah.、Kidding. Okay. I have <laughs> first time. I never been to one. It was my first <laughs> time. It was cool.、Um, I really liked it, and yeah, I mean, we of course when we saw the Mario movie, we had like. You know, just the stars in our eyes, I guess. You know, with everything. But we are going to be doing like a little look back video to see. Does it hold up? Have our feelings changed? Have our feelings because changed? Because we did do. We 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 scored the Mario movie with a review, like we, we rarely、did. like we rarely do. Right. So we're going to go back a year later and share how we really feel about it now. Yeah. Versus then, and see what's changed. Yeah, we definitely we were like you know. Kind of in in the moment for swept away. We were swept away、yeah. by Mario.、Um, so yeah, let's see if we feel the same now that we've had a little bit of distance、yes. from the Mario movie. That video is up on our channel now. If you want, wow, to check it out. Wow. All right, we are mere moments away from getting into our winning. I don't know about yours. Strategies, winning plans and strategies for strategies? keeping momentum for Nintendo while they wait for the Switch Two. First, we have a great sponsor to shout out. This episode is sponsored by Raycon. Thank you. Thank you. Let me tell you, I came back from vacation,、yes. and you know what awaited me there? More Raycon piles and piles of laundry. Oh, laundry! But how did I pass the time? Podcasting. I had the Raycon everyday earbuds in my ear the whole time,、yeah. folding laundry, taking loads up and down. It was wonderful.、Yeah. I love these earbuds. Me too. They have such good sound. They are so comfortable. They fit in your ear. Yeah, I will repeat it again. That's the main. They thing. They do not fall out of my ear,、mm -hmm. which is so important when it comes to earbuds.、Yeah. I love these things. They have different attachments、yes. you can put on. Find your fit. And, and exactly, and find your fit. Don't just hope you just cram it in your ear and it、yeah. stays in. No、yeah. more of that. There's a lot of he,、um, earbuds that do not fit in your ear. I, that, yes. That are also very <laughs> extremely、expensive. like this is the top of the line earbud. Really, it just、yeah. falls right out of my ear. Exactly. So, Come on. So、now. these are great because they they fit really well. You can you know customize it to how how they fit in your ear.、Um, they're also very affordable. Yes. And. And the battery lasts a really long time. I use them every single day. I walk this dog twice a day, and I basically have like an audio book or a podcast、right. that I'm listening to every single day. And I love these. I, I'm always reaching for these. Come in different colors, very stylish,、mm -hmm. look、yeah. great. Check them out. So go to buyraycon.com/kittenkrista today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. You'll get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com/kittenkrista. That's buyraycon.com/kittenkrista. I'll put the link right over here and also in the description below. Outstanding. Okay. All right, so big ideas. So as we're saying, Nintendo might need to buy some time. And as you were saying, this is this is not a you know uncommon place for companies to find themselves. Nintendo included plans change. They don't always leak out when they change, but sometimes you find yourself like, oh, we have this big、yeah. stretch of open time where we didn't have anything. Now we have nothing happening, and we need、right. to find a way for something to happen. And the thing is, is that at the beginning of the year when we were. All making our predictions for 2024 when we we're thinking about the potential timing for the launch. The predictions that were previously correct. The predictions and are now probably not known as the artist that was correct. <laughs> They were correct, believe me.、Um, but I think at Nintendo, those plans were also previously correct. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah. When, when they started 2024. At Nintendo, they had timing. They had a roadmap. They had a calendar. Yeah, this is the year. For here we go. All the things that they were going to be doing leading up to the launch of Switch Two, 
Just like our predictions, their plans has changed because of unforeseen circumstances, which which is the these reported um, internal delays, which are, you know, seemingly pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, so this is something unexpected for them too, you know. So they they are in a situation where they would have. Had made plans that were all hinged around this this moment that now is a much different time. So they are doing this right now inside inside the company to figure out what can they do to keep things moving. Why don't you talk about why this matters? Because maybe somebody is listening to this and saying, "Well, it moved from November to March. That's a couple of months. Who cares? You just wait it out. We've had we've had droughts with Nintendo before. We've had to wait before. Why does this matter?" I think I think for them, you know, the reason why it's internally why it matters so much is like they know the sort of the steep fall off that people can have with their interest. Some could say it's happening right now. Some can say it's happening <laughs> could right now. Could be argued. Yeah, I mean, yes, we're we're maybe seeing this unfold itself as we speak, which is kind of fascinating, honestly. But we saw this happen. We saw this happen with Wii, which was like the biggest thing ever. Like everybody in the entire world. Was talking about we, and then it was like a snap of a finger, right? And then nobody was talking about we. And you feel that when we were in inside Nintendo, when this was happening, that pressure that you feel to maintain relevance and just keep that momentum, and you're like feel like you're losing that fight, is really severe.、Um, and I know that they're feeling that now inside the company. Yeah, they're one hundred percent feeling it now. They also have this historical like. Like, you know, thing that they're kind of battling as well. Like they they saw this happen before from Wii to Wii U. They do not want this to happen again to them,、um, especially because Switch was so successful. But you could argue that Wii was very successful, and then it totally fell off with Wii U. So they don't want history to repeat itself. They're going to try everything in their power to not let that happen. But they have also limited things to work with. Because it's not like they can be like, well, just make the hardware faster. Like that's not possibility, right? right. right? So yeah, yeah, momentum is this ethereal thing, but it definitely exists and it definitely matters, and it impacts how people are going to think about your next thing when you eventually introduce that. Because if like, oh my gosh, I love I love Nintendo. I've been playing these games nonstop, and now now there's this new thing. Yes, I'm I'm in. I don't even have to think about it. Yes,、mm-hmm. I want to continue this great thing that I've、yeah. been going, and now it's going to be bigger and better. But if you're going through this, you know, drought. And you've moved on to other systems, or you've just kind of put your switch away. You kind of need to be like, what, what, what? Oh, oh, right. Yeah, I used to like that. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't need more. Maybe I don't need this. Yeah, you don't thing, want people to have to go through that thought process. The other thing, especially with Nintendo, is they're really focused on not only capturing their, you know, longtime fans. They want to capture like everybody. Right. Like, the the really, they call it the expanded audience or like the broader consumer. You know that's why they had the Mario movie because they wanted to get people that don't play video games to be interested in Nintendo. Yeah. And if you lose your momentum in any way, part of this like journey, like especially with people that are not always watching a Nintendo Direct, that are not like a longtime Nintendo fan, maybe it was just somebody that loved the Mario movie, went to Super Nintendo World, and now you have nothing else to engage them with. They will forget you, yeah, so fast. So they'll move on to something else that will entertain them, right?、Um, and it's even harder, perhaps even impossible, to get them back. Yeah,、um, and also the the methods that you use to reach those people, it becomes harder if you're like you're trying to get on some you know mainstream news. Yeah, or and your brand has no relevance. Yeah, they don't the, care. People are like, "Oh, the Switch that was big like two years ago, but now nobody cares. Why、yeah. would why should we cover this?" Exactly, it, it matters in a lot of different ways. Yeah. So, anyways, this is all to say that they are dealing with this internally. They're asking people, probably from all departments, to come up with lots of different ideas、right. to keep the brand relevant, to keep the momentum going. Um, and if they asked us if we were still there, th- these would be our yes. Ideas, we approached this, or at least I, I don't know. I don't know what you did. I don't know what kind of nonsense you cooked up. But、oh, for me, I, I was like, if, if if I if I was put in charge of this some project, yeah, like you you have full control over、right. this. What are you gonna do? So I'm curious of like what kind of constraints you put around yourself because I definitely 
put myself as if I was back there knowing like what Nintendo is yep. and is not going to be willing to do. Yep. So for example, you know, Same. oh, you should just drop the price of the Switch to $99. No. Well, they're not going to do that. I don't that. have anything like that there. And there's also other constraints of like, oh, we'll just make this game in six months. Like, right. You actually can't do that. Right. You can't <laughs> like, do that. Like a lot of, even what people might consider to be very easy ports of older games mm -hmm. still take a lot of time and looking at the time that we have now, you need something that is going to be available and ready pretty quick, like within right. six-ish months or so. Yeah. I did make some sort of like assumptions that yeah. Nintendo does have some stuff that they've kept back for a rainy day. So that's, yeah. Um, that uh, And they, they do this. We know that they do this because yes, we've seen we, them do it. Yes, but we don't know what it is. Right. So I'm curious to see what you have. I, I also expected that there would be something like that, but mostly my plan stays away from that because I don't know what it is. Yeah. I have I have like one or two little things that is maybe contingent on like if they have sure. something stowed away for such an occasion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 But a lot of my ideas are like around things that, you know, maybe external parties can help them with. Okay. Yeah. Can I go first? Yes. I'd love can. to go first. I'll okay. play Doug Bowser. Kit song? We're going above Doug Bowser. Okay, and, Doug, and Doug Bowser's not calling me Kitson. <laughs> Kito san? The, what, what, Please what tell the, me your point. What in the world? <laughs> Kito san. <laughs> so I think we have three goals here. Okay. Uh, the first goal is to continue the momentum with core Nintendo fans ahead of the Switch 2 launch. These are the people like you and I who are playing the Switch, playing games every day, playing mm -hmm. Switch as much as possible. Paying attention to directs. Paying attention to news, yep. watching what, daily what is happening. Right. Second... Fully maximize our remaining sales opportunities with the Nintendo Switch. Okay. And I think this is critical of, of how they're looking at this. Because again, we are potentially on a path to becoming the best-selling hardware of all time. Mm -hmm. There are still things we can do to bring people into this ecosystem, even now. At the late stages. Who have waited this long. We have to act on these opportunities while we can because we don't know if we'll ever have another opportunity like Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. We gotta squeeze that rag dry. Okay. <laughs> Bring out every yes. drop. We have, and I think this is one of the key lenses that they're looking at this. Yes, like we cannot yes. compromise the little bit that we have left in the mm -hmm. Switch just because of you know the next thing that we have. Yeah. And then finally, we have to flawlessly announce the Switch 2 and drive a breakthrough launch. Okay. That, sounds exact, that sounds exactly like how they would write it in the campaign, too. I'm getting like a little chill. Just, I'll say that again. Think. Flawlessly announce the Switch 2 and drive <laughs> a breakthrough launch, and that means bigger than Switch 1. Yeah. That's absolutely what their goal is. They need to put more I don't have too much in that because that's kind of, you know, beyond what this exercise is. But yeah. as, as they're looking at it, this is the three parts I think they want yeah. they want to, to accomplish. On. Right. Yes. Okay. Part one. Continuing the momentum with the core Nintendo fans. Don't look at my page. I'm all, I can't even see that far. You're, you're spoiling yourself. You're just ruining this for yourself. I'm going to close my eyes. So we're going <laughs> into the vault of great ideas past of buying time. Yeah, there's a lot of ideas to buy time. Guess what? 2024 is the year of Donkey Kong. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. In the year of our, our Donkey Kong, and we 2024. Have a, and we have a lot of great reasons to do that. This is actually the 30th anniversary of Donkey Kong Country. There you go. This year. Did you know that? No. This is the 25th <laughs> anniversary of Donkey Kong 64. So we have multiple anniversaries. The Donkey Kong Land to is celebrate. opening Super Nintendo the, World. Exactly. Donkey Kong just played a very prominent part in this great movie mm -hmm. and seems to be continuing to be very important into the future. So this serves us on multiple levels. Yes. So it makes strategic business sense. That's true. And you have a... a I see advice. you nodding a lot. I see a lot of heads nodding mm -hmm. in this meeting, yes. Doug Bowser. Doug Bowser. I can see, see that you agree with what I'm, yes. what I'm slinging at you here. <laughs> so we're going to be announcing this in our June Nintendo Direct with other... which Otherwise, I don't know what would have been in that. Yeah. This and could be your little umbrella message. We're going to have a key product to really drive momentum for the year of Donkey Kong. Something banana related? It's going to be the Donkey Kong Country Anniversary Collection. Okay. Is it going to be banana related? <laughs> <laughs> this product will include the following games. Donkey Kong Country 1 through 3, the Game Boy Donkey Kong Land Games, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and the, the key linchpin of this is for the first time ever, 
an HD version of Donkey Kong Country Returns,、uh-huh. which is the Wii game, the first、It's、retro, game. the first Retro Studios、yeah. game, re-released on Nintendo 3DS, but never in HD. Okay. And that is going to be only available in the Donkey Kong Country Anniversary Collection. Okay. Will they remove this collection? Don't. In、Don't jump ahead! Don't jump ahead! <laughs> It will also include some very exciting archival materials,、uh-huh. such as concept art,、mm-hmm. the Nintendo Power promotional video. Oh, okay. Remember that that, VH- that VHS that VHS tape. VHS tape. tape. Yes. And that. we will be filming new interviews with key members from NCL NOA Rare and Retro Studios to commemorate the anniversary. That's cool. That will be included on this set. It's going to release. Physically and digitally, September 2024. So we're really kicking off our holiday season big with, a with this Kong product.、Game. Yeah, you can get it digitally for the low price of sixty nine ninety nine, or、uh-huh. you can buy the special physical edition for eighty nine ninety nine. Oh, that's steep. That's got all sorts of beautiful packaging and other. Yes, maybe it's some a, maybe it's a, box. some sort of a banana package. I don't、banana. know. Yes. Some, we, we've got some sort of banana steel case or something, and <laughs> some sort of a banana statue. You gotta、like、peel the the case off. Right. Oh, oh that's oh, that sounds fun. Peel but, off the. But case. But this is like truly a premium collector's item. Collector's item. Collector's item. And because you were curious, Krista, it's going to be only available through March thirty first. I knew it. Twenty twenty five. That's something that we totally. <laughs> and then、changed. we take it away. And then yeah, take it away.、Right. Limited edition. We're also going to have, in addition to this great package. A special Donkey Kong edition Switch OLED. Oh, that's going to be、uh, launching in August. Okay, some sort of a banana yellow Joy-Con. I don't know. I'm like, what? Are, what color? We got brown. Banana yellow. We got yellow. yellow and we got red for the、oh, top. Oh, that is cool. I'll let the artists out there <laughs> figure out that weird combination. Yeah, that's cute. But yes, it could be a fun one. It Make it、be. furry. It could be. Oh. Make it furry. Yeah. I f- didn't.、Uh, <laughs> Could be kind of creepy. I feel like Xbox did that. Was it? Did they have like a Sonic the Hedgehog, like, like a furry some blue? Some sort of furry blue. Yeah, I think that's maybe a bad、oh, idea. Actually, let's, gross, actually. let's not do that. Those, don't make Collecting all your hand sweat over there. Ew. The, you're going to smell like Donkey Kong. Yeah. We're not done yet. Oh. The year of Donkey Kong continues. Oh, how fun! For our wonderful Nintendo Switch Online members, they can look forward to. Donkey Kong 64、uh-huh. being released for the first time on its 25th anniversary、okay. for Nintendo 64. We're going to be releasing Donkey Kong 94 for the Game Boy. Okay, that game is also celebrating its 30th anniversary. That's right. What a coincidence! What a coincidence! Incredible. And we are going to be flying press and content creators, but not us. <laughs> You're not invited. To Japan invited. to experience the opening of Super Nintendo World's Donkey Kong area. As it opens. Oh ha!、Huh. Wow. Where's this costume character? He's got to come out, do a thing. Everything is gonna. All the dreams are gonna come true. All the dreams. All your banana dreams are coming true. So that's kind of the key activity of what we got going for the year of Donkey Kong. Okay. Does so far? What do you feel? What are you feeling about this so far? I'm feeling so pretty、far? good about this. I'm feeling great about and this. And I think you know what? Like, there could be a new Donkey Kong game coming for Switch too. Again. So you are building the road, building the road、right. up to that. Very、moment. strategically sound to have this product out here. Yeah, yeah. Okay.、And、we've been saying a long for a long time that they, Nintendo needs to do more work to like really, like, put on a pedestal Donkey Kong as a character. That's right. So there you okay. go. Okay. Next. Next. We're done with Donkey Kong.、No、Stop Donkey. staring at my screen. I'm not. I'm not joking. I want you to experience the impact of this, please, <laughs> properly. Let me close my eyes. So,、again. <laughs> so I, I, I suspect with you, you kind of veered off into these remakes and you know what they've got in the vault. I went in a slightly different direction. Okay. Which is we've got a couple games where we've released a base game and we've released significant DLC.、Mm-hmm. We have not yet ever released those in an all-in-one package. Okay. Until now. Okay. So we're going to be releasing. A Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with all of complete the, edition. I see. With all of the base content plus the booster course passes,、mm-hmm. all together、okay. in a single package. That's going to be releasing in October, and in November we're doing that for Super Smash Brothers. Okay. Ultimate. So then you have all the fighters pass, all of that. All stuff of that、together. on a single thing. Yeah, especially because those two things are done. Right. Right. And this is exciting. Oh. For Super Smash Brothers. 
we're going to be releasing Gold Edition Amiibo uh -huh. of the top 10 most popular characters as selected by a fan vote. Fan vote. Yes. They've done that before. Can you believe this? Yes. Can you believe the excitement around getting the gold amiibo? Yeah. Of whoever? That's <gasps> awesome. Wow! <laughs> I would be excited. You're, you're selling yourself I'm, right now. I think this is great. But South Korea loves a fan vote. So he'd sure. be down. I think he doesn't be, have he don't have to do anything. He'd really. be down for this. Yeah. You know, he'd spray he, paint some amiibo, get him out there. Yeah. <laughs> He's personally <laughs> spray back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's easy, easy to do. Right, and you can, you're definitely getting Smash players to double dip on this. Oh yeah. You're absolutely getting it. Well, of course, and then all, any collector out there right. is gonna want those, right. yeah. Okay, we're not done. Oh, in, in more. part We're still in part one of this great plan. Wow, part one. The other thing that's happening in this time frame that could be exciting for the quote core Nintendo fans is the Nintendo Museum. Yes, I have an idea for that too, So actually. we're doing a couple things around this. I imagine they're going to do this. We're going to have a Nintendo Museum Direct. It's going to be hosted by Mr. Miyamoto. It's yes. going to be time to the museum opening. That's not the exciting thing here. We have a truly breakthrough, unprecedented... Idea? Idea. NBDB... <laughs> pink, what's it called? Purple, purple, purple cow? Purple cow. Reggie, are we so proud? What is Get the ready cow? for this. Tell me the purple. We're going to be offering personalized virtual tours of the museum for groups of up to eight. Because you know what, people cannot, not everybody can just up and go to Uji Japan yeah. to go to this museum. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo is never about the haves and the have-nots. We mustn't have have-nots, we need haves. Everybody has to be able to We need more haves access. than have-nots, got it? Access. Yes, so it, we need to make this available to the people. Sure. So we are offering these great personalized virtual tours you can do them in groups of eight. They will be available in key languages worldwide, and they're going to do them during the museum's off hours. Okay. So basically, Japan time, when the museum's closed, you're going to have people guiding these virtual tours with a little camera, right. giving, them, the giving them a talk, and maybe you know you can chat in a question or two, and they can help you right. answer you that can, stuff. You like, can sign up for a time slot. <laughs> it's going to be $99.99 oh, for a group... A group, oh, group of, of eight, 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 up to eight people. Okay, that's fine. That's actually. That's I pay actually, a lot of money for this. That's actually fine. This would actually assuage a lot of the stress I feel about this museum. Because you would go, of you wanting would want to, of wanting to experience it. Right, right, right. And it is a hard thing to get to for yes. you know, ninety nine percent of the world. Right. right? So. It's not like the theme park where we're opening this in different places around the world. Yeah, it only exists in one sorry, place. Sorry, sorry, you're up yet again. <laughs> Right, and, and it is something where we can sort of deliver that experience mm -hmm. to you through these virtual tours. Yeah. And it's and it's specific to you. So like the, you can say, who is it? It's like, oh, well, welcome Kit to your personalized tour of the Nintendo That's Museum. Cool. Let's get started. We're gonna start here and blah, blah. I'm gonna take you through this. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? I have a museum idea too. Is it the same as this? Almost. Is it as good as this? No. No, I like the virtual tour idea. And finally, museum store merch will be available through Nintendo.com. Keep it locked. <laughs> Keep it locked. Keep it locked. Okay, that's part yeah. one. Okay. This is the core fan. Core fans are going to be hyped for this. They're going to be hyped. They like this is exciting. Talk. I would love this. Gold Amiibo museums. <laughs> Pay attention, people. <laughs> this is good stuff. Okay. okay. Part two. And you've already made a lot of money off of them. <laughs> We're making more money now. Part two. Fully maximize the remaining sales opportunities with Nintendo Switch. Uh-huh. So as we were saying, the just straight price cut is a little unpopular. Yeah, that's not gonna fly at Nintendo. Because you're hurting the value of the product, it, you right. know, whether it's perceived or actual, you never wanna do that. Right, right, but exactly. there are things that we can do- Bundles. That increase the value, pot yeah. potentially significantly, without having to cut the price. Right. So, we are embarking on an aggressive bundling strategy- There you go. In Here the comes place the of a price cut. <clears throat> the goal, is to include a game and a significant piece of digital content with each bundle, targeting about a hundred dollar value. Wow! So we're basic. We're basically taking a hundred dollars off the price. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? You good? I'm, I'm you good? good? I'm good. Okay. Keep going. Here, and we are, and we will be picking the bundle games based on the data that we have at Nintendo. And they have a lot of it. Of what is the highest player engagement, player right. player satisfaction, mm -hmm. you name it. So the games that we're choosing. And the, and the content that you get. One, Fortnite, the game's free, but guess what? You're getting $100 of V-Bucks. Oh, I want you would buy, buy that this. right now. You would buy Give this. Give it to me. Two, 
Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah. Plus, they've done those all the already. full all the full booster course passes included, mm -hmm. kind of with that that game that we were just talking about before, yeah. and the same thing with Smash, Smash. as well. Of yes, and you would offer these as hard and soft bundles to limit sellouts. I don't know if people know what the difference between a hard and a soft bundle is. Yeah. A hard bundle is everything Literally, is in, it's in, a in, in the box. Together. Yeah. Soft bundle is like the retailer can kind of piece it together. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, you oh, get the right. same items, but they can give all it to right, you well, separately. All right, well, here's the hardware. I got a copy of Smash in the back, and yeah. here's credit for you to here's buy your, your shop cards to buy your exactly. stuff. Exactly. So yeah. they, they kind of can cobble it together. But either way, you're still getting all the stuff. Right. And you're knocking up to $100 off. I think yeah. all of those are going to be around roughly a hundred bucks if you're talking about the game plus the additional plus value the, the DLC that stuff. you are getting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Black Friday. We're done messing around. No more of this Mario Kart business. <laughs> Although it's still in there. <laughs> We're going to be offering all of these bundles at $199.99, which is basically $99 when you consider the hundred dollars of content that you're getting. What right. a deal. That's a, that's a good Who deal. could say no to that? That's a good threat. To, uh, it's a good holiday. So gift. basically, the, the assumption here is like there are people who are just so price conscious. They're like, I can't spend this much money on a switch. Right. You can now. Is it an OLED? Yeah. Wow. It sure is. Wow. <laughs> it sure is. Because wow. guess what? We're gonna need to clear that stuff out anyway. So That's let's right. let's get it moving here. Wow. Because I mean, if you don't move it now, you might need to actually do a price cut later. Yeah. So let's That's true. let's take advantage. Might of that. as well do it now. Yeah. Right. Finally, flawlessly announcing the Switch Two, driving a breakthrough launch. So we can, now we have a lot happening through the holidays. Yeah, you're good. You can and wait. We, and we can do a, a full, proper end-of-year holiday season. Mm -hmm. And again, maximize the opportunity. So we're going to announce the Switch 2 pretty much right away in January. Yeah. And it's going to come out at the end of March. It's a very tight window. But will, it's okay. I will admit that. Yeah. But I think they can do it. Yeah. And maybe... And again, they don't need to sell people on the Switch 2 as much because people are going to understand what right. that is. And maybe with the Switch 2 perhaps not being super different from the Switch, maybe less is more in terms That's of time. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And also, you know, with Switch 1, it was announced in October. And came out in March. But there was yeah. kind of nothing that happened between that first announcement and January. Yeah, January was the big like, so preview you, event. So you probably could... I think you can do it. It's, it again... It's, it's unprecedented. Yeah. It's different. But that's what Nintendo's about. Yeah, and you don't have to get people on board because they already understand what a Switch is. So it's yeah. like easy to do. We're that. putting smiles on faces with this plan, Surprising Doug Bowser. Surprising and delighting. <laughs> Hit the everyone. approve button. <laughs> Give us the money. How much, how much budget do you require? Give me my bonus. Give me my special bonus. Thank you. How much money do I have to just make for this, this product? For the, for I don't this know. Plan. Make how this, much, make how this, much budget do you require? I don't know. For make this, this product. How much? To get some gold. This. Get this gold spray paint. <laughs> I need about thirty-five yeah. ninety-nine. <laughs> For the gold spray That's paint. all we need. We need a we couple need, dollars from yeah. here and there for a, That's a, all we need. a special Donkey Kong, whatever. We need to fly somebody to the UK to interview Rare. That's it. There we go. <laughs> Grade my plan. It's very good. A plus. I think yeah. it's A plus. A plus. I think I, I, I think it. I solved this problem. Yeah. If they do this, <laughs> you can sue them. <laughs> oh, the tables have turned, Nintendo. Um, no, that's funny. But yeah, that, that's that's very comprehensive. I, I think that they should listen to this podcast <laughs> and get some ideas. All right, now I want to hear yours. Yeah, so, okay. So mine's a little bit different. Um, I only had one goal. And the goal that I have, similar to yours, is how do we maintain relevance for the brand? Um, you know, like we're talking about, they're such a powerful brand, but, you know, in this day and age, it just takes a moment for you to lose that momentum and then it goes away forever. So all of my ideas are around maintaining relevance and just making sure that Nintendo is still like a brand that people talk about, even though there might be not, not a lot, you know, new announcements happening. So the first strategy is something that we're seeing kind of dwindling right now is that they are kind of in a place where we don't know when the next software when the, when the next game is coming out like after, after luigi's summer. mansion right after the summer kind of it, yeah we have this like black hole of right. like what could possibly be launching for the rest of the year they need to be a little bit different i think because usually they like to like surprise people by announcing things you know kind of very shortly before they come out but like i think in this time of trying to maintain relevance they need to be a little bit more transparent with their roadmap about like what games are coming out for the rest of the year. So in this next direct in June or whatever, like they basically need to announce like the entire roadmap of what they are launching. 
And I do think that they have some ports stowed away for this rainy day. So now is the time. This is like the break box in case of emergency moment. Like, don't hold back on those anymore. Like, launch them. You know, whatever they were holding for a rainy day, this is the day. So if those Twilight Princess, you know, Windbreaker ports Here we go. exist. <laughs> Then I'm so tired of talking about these them, you know? stupid games. Yeah, but there could be other ports that they have that they're just sitting on uh -huh. and waiting around for the right moment. What are you waiting for? This is the right moment. All right. The other thing that I, I thought So announce be, everything. Announce everything, yeah. Uh, to, to give yourself a full calendar. Exactly. Okay. Because then people know, like, these are things that are still coming, and I can look forward to it. Because right now we have nothing, yeah. literally nothing, to look forward to. Um, the other thing is, I think they should do, like, a very aggressive indie play right now. Um, you know, they do the indie showcase and things like that, but, like, I think they should really, like, do more to attract either more indie talent or even, like, help these developers launch their games with better strategies on Switch or, like, give them marketing support. Deals? Better deals? deals. Yeah, like, just anything that they can do to attract... Indies and third parties, but most importantly, indies, um, because I think that these like smaller scope games, like we were talking about last week, is going to feed their calendar. Yeah, and and that's the stuff that can be done in the next you know six months or whatever it is, or six to eight months or so, versus a big a big title that probably wouldn't be able to come out in time. So. This is your your chance to call in those those indie developers. Maybe do like a very you know sort of like indie university program where you bring these people in, you support them, you give them a really good value to launch on Switch, you give them the support they need to market their game on Switch. Get those games as Switch exclusives if you can, um, just to give you know the, the hardware more value. We're excited to announce we have secured the exclusive console rights to AAA <laughs> Clock 3. <laughs> Perfect. Please clap. <laughs> <laughs> in tie, whatever. Exclusive, <laughs> exclusive content. Uh, um, but yeah, I think that that is one area where, like, you know, a lot of people have said in the life of the Switch that it's been like an indie machine. Yeah. And this is where they could really, like, make that a focus for them. And that's an important bridge into Switch, too. Exactly. Don't lose track of yeah. that. Yeah, obviously third third parties, too, but I think, you know, easier with indies because they, they can be more nimble and can turn around stuff okay. quicker. And then retro content on NSO, I think that is a very easy way for them to just keep it, keep, you know, the hardware feeling like there's stuff coming to it. And every time they announce, like, these games are coming to NSO. People seem very excited about it. It's like a good burst of conversation about Switch whenever that happens. So like they just need to announce all of that for the rest of the year instead of like drip dropping it. Any suggestions? Of NSO what, what, what should what, what should they do? What do you mean? Just put it all what there. What should they do? All, all right. of it. All right. <laughs> Give it to us. Okay. Right? Okay. So I mean, yet again, you could write a, a check to Square Enix and get something like I don't know, like a Chrono Trigger or, yeah, or a classic exactly. Final Fantasy. Get, just get it on there. Just sure. get these classic games on there. Yeah, make it feel like this is a, a classic game library is really solid on Switch because people are going to be like, "Great, the hard hardware still has juice in it." You know? Yeah. I'm still like at least still able to play something new every. That's a, weeks. Cause that's another uh, consideration of like rolling NSO subscriptions over to the new hardware. Yeah. You want that to just seamlessly go. You don't want people to be like, you know, I'm actually not using this, so I'm gonna cancel this right. in the last couple months. Right. Before the and, and then you and then go you through lose all those subscriptions. And then you go the churn as they call it, you go through the friction that's of having really to win win back, the win back, that's another that's, term. That's really hard. Of having to bring those people back on. That's so much more work than just like yeah. just it just rolls on. You just keep paying, it just carries over. Exactly. Exactly. That's a, that's we sh we shouldn't underestimate how important that is. Yeah, and then that is the whole that that is like a whole department at Nintendo that's yeah. working on that business for them, which is all about Win Back Central. Win Back Central. <laughs> Get on the phone. Um, but yes, that is such an important part of like Nintendo's business strategy. Like yeah. they they will do whatever. I think they should be doing more, but they they are trying to do whatever it takes to keep that momentum. Yeah. Keep yeah. that. Keep that. And it's so feeling like it's worth the money and, and worth, you know, people staying signed up for it. Okay. Um, okay, the next one is all around, like, 
trade shows and events and things like that. Because Nintendo has been pretty spoiled over the last, you know, seven years of Nintendo spoiled. World Championships 2024. Here, here we go. go. Here we here go. go. Here we go. Space World. Here we go. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but the the sort of the idea around this is like you need to be part of bigger gaming conversations and events. Like Nintendo's been pretty spoiled over the last seven years. They have been able to stand on their own to you know do directs or do their own events, um, and people have been paying attention. I think that they need to like insert themselves better this back half of this year, next year into like broader game industry events and happenings to just make sure that there's still like a voice in the industry. So yeah. like maybe consider, you know, going to Summer Game Fest or participating oh, in, a, in a big, bigger, more broader event. With, with Wind Waker HD? Wind Waker HD, <laughs> Jeff <laughs> Keighley. With what game exactly? Here we go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. Get on board with one of the games that, you know, maybe is, um, you know, in the in the break in case of emergency box like that you can or, or you could sponsor booths for for your great indies yeah again. sponsor because that's for your indies. that's very expensive to you know get up right. to get to, uh, at that right. event maybe so, there's a couple indies with yeah, there, switch exclusives there could be some alternative paths into that that you could consider right right but Nintendo has been very like snobbish so about so it. again this is the big question of like what where are they going to draw the line of things like oh we can't we can't be seen doing that we can't be seen stooping to go to summer game fest oh come on now you know that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they have a pretty good relationship with... Well, they do, but for, for whatever reason, they haven't done it. Because they haven't felt the need to. Okay, or, I mean... So now it's time to, like, maybe, you know, consider these alternate options yeah. for, for, again, maintaining I mean, it's, brand it's time, it's time to stop turning your nose up at stuff. That's right. They have been very snobby about kind of these things and, and just having this attitude of like, we don't need anyone. Right. We can just do everything on our own. But Well, I don't know. I mean, that I think that's kind of the interesting question here of like, what is the line for them yeah. of, of stuff they haven't had to do that they're now going to be open to doing versus yeah. stuff, I think, stuff they're going to have to learn the hard way. Right. I, I think that this is one of those things where it could go either way. Like yeah. they could decide I either agree. way, but they should decide... The, the right way, which is to participate and not and be a team player and not be snobby and mm -hmm. reclusive, you know? Um, but yeah, I can see this being like a conversation, especially with Japan, who are ultimately the people that are snobby about this kind of stuff. Yeah. I think Nintendo of America is pretty open to stuff like this, honestly. But when whenever we present these ideas to Japan, they'd be like, no, we don't need them. We can do this on our own. Like, why would we need to hitch our wagon to this event, you know, or whatever? So this might take some convincing, but again, if the goal is maintain relevance, better get into these bigger gaming conversations. All right. You know? Sure, so yeah, sure, there's, sure. there's stuff in the summer, like Summer Game Fest. There's stuff in the winter, like TGAs. Um, even like bigger presences at PAX. You know, the PAX East stuff was so boring, by the way. It was like a nothing booth. So we know that- But they, I heard the Switch 2 was there. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what people were behind saying. closed doors, many, right? Many people are saying the Switch Two was going to be at PAX East. Behind closed doors, guys, the BCD, <laughs> the great BCD. Our the, uh, the Nintendo events team is the best. Yes, and they are just itching to do something big. That's true. And let them cook. Let them let them do something big. Let them let them you know do something creative so that it feels like Nintendo's still like big and out there and doing something. Um. And people can, like, physically, with their eyeballs, see right. it. Right. Let's combine right. all your ideas with the Donkey Kong Country Anniversary Collection. There you go. And now it's blowing up. There you go. Announce that at Summer Game Relevance guys. retained. And then you can get a, a, a book where people can write little notes to Donkey Kong. Oh, but boy. get the white out ready to go because <laughs> you might get some smut in that book. <laughs> That's another story. All right. And then the next one is all about the holidays. And how we do need something. We need a little something yeah. for people to buy sure. during the holidays. What do we got? Because right now we got nothing. You know, people want a gift. We want a physical thing. Uh, this is the time for the GameCube Mini. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the time. You know, you got it. Oh this boy. is the time for the teeny little purple okay. spice. Maybe a Ooh. spice version. It's all in little, different colors. Little GameCube cute. Okay, okay. Little very handle. cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, get, you got that going. It's a physical product. That's something that all someone right. can buy and wrap. It's a very yeah. easy gift. 
It's going to sell out probably. All the like, GameCube kids in your life will be very happy. Or, you know, you can do a nostalgia play. Like, you grew up playing the GameCube, now you can give it to somebody Those else. are the GameCube kids. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's a nice part of Nintendo history. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some really good games for it. We went from GameCube revisionist history to Wii U revisionist history. <laughs> the two, we're not talking the, about... The two worst-selling systems. We're not talking about a Wii U mini, okay? <laughs> we will in 10 years. We will in 10, in 10 years. years. Oh, it's here. tiny. A tiny gamepad. Come That's back cute. here. We'll be retired. It's 10 years later. We're, we have a Wii U mini. It's going to be great. Those were the days. So there's going to be folders and themes for everyone. It's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, this is perfect. This is like some little tchotchke-ish kind okay. of thing that they can have for the holidays. You know, easy to easy to put at, put that on a shelf. Easy for grandma to buy. You know, that kind of stuff. Grandma loves GameCube. Grandma yeah. would love anything you love. Okay, so yeah, sell that. All right. For like a hundred bucks, you know. How much did the other minis cost? About I feel like those. Bucks. I feel like those were a little bit less. Like seventy nine ninety. I feel like those were closer to the price of the game. I, I so would they, say what, this would be like a between like. It's got to be a little bit higher. Like up there. eighty nine to ninety nine. If you sold a GameCube Mini for a hundred bucks, it's not bad. I think that people would go for that. I'd buy that. Yeah, and it had like twenty, what twenty to thirty 20 games. Twenty to thirty games on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got some good classics on there too. Some good, some great games on GameCube. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for Stryker, sure. You could sell all these extra controllers. Metroid, all these, yeah. all these mini controllers. All these controllers. Got to do, get, get some four-player double do, dash. You could do, do you have double dash. You could do um, the, the different colors, like we were saying. Maybe you could do like two different colors of the, you know, the GameCube classic. Colorways or whatever that could yeah. be fun. We better move on before I. I don't. Now I'm having some doubts about a GameCube mini, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing I have on here is. But why not put the GameCube games? <laughs> here we go. Now, why not put the GameCube games on NSO? Because you need a physical something for the holidays. Yeah, it's called a Nintendo Switch. Buy it to play these GameCube games. No, you want something else. You need something else. Nintendo Switch is harder to like convince people, but not a well, maybe hundred dollar something is like. Well, oh, maybe if the move. I mean, it was kind of like what happened with those those old systems. You got them there. They sold out, and then they put those games yeah, on. You could do that. So maybe maybe GameCube is on a Switch too. That's right. the move. That's the move. After this stuff sells, sells out. out. Immediately, and people get mad about it. They'll be mad. Yes, but it'll, it'll cause a stir. It'll cause okay. conversation. Okay, you know. Okay, my last thing is about yes. this expanded audience, uh -huh. right? Which is all important to right. Nintendo. They're, they're very focused on kids this year. But her grandma was already buying a GameCube. Yeah, for her, her. Oh, for not her, for herself. For her Nintendo fan grandson. It wasn't for herself. Yeah, for her thirty-seven-year-old Nintendo I get it. fan. Grandma grandson. did not want to play Eternal Darkness. No. Okay. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> grandma. Yeah, grandma's buying this as a gift. Okay. You know, um, but there there is this this sort of focus that Nintendo always has on like this expanded audience. Like, how do we keep them also very yeah. engaged? That we can't always just be talking to the Nintendo fans because you know we we know they're going to be on board, even though sometimes they get taken for granted a little bit. Um, here is the time to call in all of your favors with Levi's, with Lego, oh. with Uniqlo, with Vans, with ColourPop, with whatever other, you know, brand partnership. Yeah. The, S, the Strategic Initiative sure. team is a team at Nintendo that does all these partnerships. Now is the time. Double down, triple down on these things. Whoa. You know, get... The Nintendo brand out there. Work with designers. Get it in on clothing. You know, work with toy companies. Get it on shelves so people are playing with the toys or doing something else. If you don't have games, you don't have a new system coming out. You got to engage people in another way. Yeah. So I think that doing you know like literally getting more of these partnerships um, out this year, if possible would be really good for them. Okay. Yeah. There's a plan. I thought you said you had something about the museum. Oh, I didn't say it because you, you said it already. But yeah, I think the museum, I, my idea for the museum was to do like the, um, you know how Mr. Miyamoto the and- 3D, Put 3DSs in the museum. <laughs> no, I was gonna do a Switch, a Switch yeah. museum guide. Okay. Where you can put like a little museum tour on your Switch. Sure. And it's like Mr. Oh, oh again, so you don't have to go. Right, but it's not like the personalized tour that you were talking about. It's like Mr. Miyamoto taking you through the museum, but you can watch it on your Switch. We're reviving Wii U Online for one reason. It's the, <laughs> remember, remember in the Google Street View? It's, it's Street View of the museum. 
and you could walk. That'd be kind of cool, actually. That was pretty sick, actually. That Google Street View was that fun. was that was yeah. pretty legit. Was like, <laughs> I really like that. Yeah, yeah. the little like map. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo gets VR, but it's only for museum it, tours. No, no, no. <laughs> you can put your Labo VR on, oh, and it's a museum good, tour. Good, 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 good. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, that was my museum right. idea. But yes. Um, I did have, like, a little thing in here well, there's about more. Switch 2 and, like, the launch timeline yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I think that it's more so something they can announce next year because they just want to keep people focused on sure. the here and now, which is what they have available for Switch, and the, Nintendo's gonna do everything in their power not to like cannibalize the Switch right now, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't think that they're gonna announce any Switch 2 news this year, given the delay, um, which means, yeah, to your point, it's gonna be a very compacted timeline next year um, for them, but yeah, yeah, they, they probably will keep pretty quiet about that unless the, those you know rumors are not true, um, but yeah. All right. These are good ideas, Nintendo. I think we solved it. I'm gonna give it to you for free. Honestly, it's not. I mean, it's a it's a tight timeline, but there's a lot that you can do. Yeah. That's kind of the conclusion that I came to after doing this. Of like, this is actually not that hard. That's my thing too. If you can get everybody on board and focus, like like a Nintendo that's very focused on the same goal, they get anything done. That's and, very and any true. time, any any crazy time frame, they'll do it. Very true. It's very true. And the other thing that I, when I was you know, going through this exercise, it wasn't hard for me to come up with all of these ideas. Yeah. It was very easy to come right. up with these ideas, right. actually, and they seem very reasonable. Um, but the question is, to your point, again, is like, what is their, where is the line that they'll draw and what they're willing to do? Right. Like, are they going to be snobby and, and on their yeah. little pedestal about it because they tend to be up there when things are going well and it's hard for them to come down to earth, you know, for... To, to solve these kinds of problems or to solve these challenges. And it's all about like whether or not they're willing to do things. Yeah. And can kind of swallow the pride a little bit and, right. and, and move forward. So Yeah. Okay. We'll we, of course, asked our Patreon community about what they would do. We got some interesting answers. Wario Tush says, I think a great idea that Nintendo is unfortunately unlikely to consider is having lots of hardware and software sales with deep discounts. There are plenty of titles, both indie and AAA, that I would probably be much more willing to try out on the Switch if they were less expensive. This might not help keep them at the center of the gaming sphere, but it would help keep Nintendo and many of their partner devs keeping their finances in order while waiting for the Switch too. It would also help Nintendo close that gap between the Switch and the PS2's lifetime sales something any console manufacturer would want to boost. Mm -hmm. Okay? Noah Sanchez says, I would hire some dev teams to get quick ports done of titles that are not yet on Switch, like they did for Twilight Princess and Wind Waker on Wii U. Those only took six months to a year and were done partially to fill gaps in releases. Funny it's happening again with those same games. <laughs> they should also instruct some dev teams to challenge to a challenge to make a small game in a few months and see what they come up with. I like this idea, like yeah. a game jam. I like that. And yeah. somebody in the in the comments pointed out that was kind of a uh, jump rope challenge sort of situation. Exactly. Yeah. And hopefully they can come up with more than that. But that <laughs> could mean, be fun. Jump rope challenge is pretty fun. That could be fun. You know, put just put out a, a mass email to all the developers. Yeah. Like you want to do something on the side. Here's, yeah. here are the parameters. Here's, here's your here's your here's your chance. Right. If you're thinking about something already. And then finally, Policy Pace says, there's a glass window with an axe in front of it hey, saying, in said. case of emergency, break glass, and in that glass case is a localized Mother 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to make any money, but it will keep the diehard fans happy and garner positive media coverage and goodwill, which is something you want at the end of a console cycle. We had to that's, end with that. <laughs> that's very true. It, you know what? Sometimes a kind of stunty idea like this. Yeah. Um, is great for right. media coverage and just like sen sentiment, you know, and that can go a longer way than you think. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Oh my gosh, how fun. All right, we are moving ahead to the games we're playing now, which is, wow, it's kind of a full list. Full list. Of games this week. Yeah. It started with Chrono Trigger, which is, of course, our spoiler cast game of the month, and you told me you're almost done. I am. Wow. I know. I have been really enjoying my playthrough of Chrono Trigger. I'm playing on my 3DS, the DS port. Um, I will just say that this game 100% holds up. All right. And it just feels, 
no different than me playing any kind of modern game. Some things that I have realized that is just like so much harder, like this is a, a very old person thing to say, but back in my day when we were playing, you know, SNES games or whatever, like little things like you can't, there's not just like some auto save that's just like saving your progress throughout. Oh. So like you have to be kind of careful about making You said sure. you lost some I lost a little bit. Time, a little bit. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So like things like that, you know, there there is sort of um, management of your like items and things like that. That's just a little bit. You ran out of ethers. My I worst nightmare. Ran out of ethers. Really? Oh no! Yeah. That is literally I had, I my had worst to nightmare. Leave, I had to like reload a save file ah. so I can go and buy more ethers ah. to restart a boss fight because I had no more ethers. Oh god! I know. So like item management. It's like you know nowadays they they they're, they make it. There's like baby mode. They make it so easy. Now you me. know why I am this way. Well, this, I is, know. this is what I grew up in. I, I'm also I also grew up in this way, but I've been since spoiled by you know these games that are just like stack of items. You have like one thousand of these things that no. you're never gonna run. Never out of. trust an auto save. Never use an item. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are ways to these live are your life. Fundamental yes. life rules. Never trust an auto save. Always save it yourself manually. That's true. No, yeah. I I I still do that too. But of course, you know. I, I get a little, I'm a little soft now, you know, from yeah. these modern games and stuff. The other thing about this game that is such a good reminder of like, this is an SNES game, is like, it does not really hold your hand in right. terms of like, what you're supposed to do next. There's not like some flashing marker on a mini map that's like, go here. Yeah. Like, you really have to talk to people, you really have to pay attention, you have to read the dialogue. Like sometimes they only tell you once too. Oh yeah, and there's not even a way for you to go back. I know, there back. were a couple times where I like jammed through the, I was like, wait, 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 I need to go back and see what that I know, was. I and then yeah. you can't. You can't. <laughs> yeah, there's not even like a, a mode where you yeah. can go look at the yeah, dialogue yeah, again, yeah. which modern games do, right? Like literally, I was doing the same thing you were, where I had like, was like reading, but I wasn't comprehending. I literally was like reading the words, but my, my yeah. mind was not right, focused. Right, right, right. And of course, I missed like a critical thing that someone told me that yeah. was like, you need to do, you need to Oh no. Here. And I was like, Oh shoot! Yeah, I had to look at a guide because I did not. I actually did not know. So <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure when I first played this, I had a like a physical strategy guide on it. I see. With me, yeah. Because yeah, there there have been a couple things where I was like, wait, what do I do? How, how would I have known this? Or there's mm -hmm. something that's kind of worded a little bit ambiguously. Where yeah. it's like, what places are they hinting at for me to go yes, now? I don't yes. know. Yeah. I re-talk to people a lot because I'm always like, what did you say again? Can you tell me again? I'm right. sorry. <laughs> like, what, what What? was that now? <laughs> Repeat those instructions. Um, so it, it is very humbling, again, to play these sort of traditional RPG games yeah. where you're just like, oh, I, I really have to pay attention. I really have to like really be very mindful about how I manage all this stuff, which I appreciate because, yeah, you, games are not like this anymore. So yeah. there's yeah. that. Um, but yeah, everything else about this game, like the art style, the music, the combat, the story, um, the characters, all of it really just holds up so well. Like, I'm so conflicted because I'm like, on one hand, I'm like, oh man, if they remastered this game, that would be so great. And then on the other hand, I'm like, don't touch this game. Yeah. It's beautiful and perfect already. Like, you don't really need to remaster it. So I'm, I'm, I'm in two minds about it a little bit. But yeah, I'm absolutely loving um, this playthrough and if anyone else is playing through again or for the first time I want to hear what you guys think because I, I think it just holds up so well. We had a bit of a difference of opinion on so I'm playing the PC version but something those two versions have in common is these illustrated animated cutscenes. Yes. That they added. Right. This was obviously not in the original right. Super Nintendo version kind of at key moments, it'll cut to this 20 second it's like a little, um, animation FMV, yeah. of something that's happening. Yeah. You seem to like these more than me. Yeah, you you said that, well your little irk with them is that they feel a little bit like out of place. Like you, It kind of takes you out of the the game a little bit and you're kind of, right. It, it's a little bit I mean, like they're, jarring. They're extremely well done, they look great, they're very exciting. Yeah. But as far as like in this, like retro pixel art game. It takes you out of like, it a little mm, bit. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm buying the connection okay. between one yeah. source and the other. I have not been bothered by that. I, I really enjoy like, you know, the sprites are of this game are so well done in a way that they just feel so animated. And even, you know, even though they're little teensy things, 
they still have such great expressions. You know, even like the yeah. little battle animations when they finish and. You know, Marley does a little jump into the air, and she has like the the big smile on her face. You can like what? see what, what, that. What, 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 what did you say her name was? Isn't it Marley? <laughs> no, I pronounce okay. it as Marley. Okay, because I I pronounce it as Marl. Maybe let's let's put it out to the good people. How do you what? how do you pronounce this character's character's name? Is it spelled M A R L E? Yeah. Marley, Marley. I thought it was Marley I all these Marl. years. Why would her name be? Why is it any of those things? It's kind of a strange Marley name. Marley is such a cute name for a princess. Why would it be Princess well, I don't know. Marl? Again, this is this is the pitfall of words that you have um, only ever read. Yeah, that's hot. And there, who who actually has the definitive pronunciation for this? We need to go find some interview for the Yuji Hori from 1997 yeah, or we need something. Yeah, find a Yuji Hori. Yeah, we can ask Yuji Hori. Ask him. This is Japanese. Hmm. This is we should have asked him when we had the chance. Dang it! <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Rats. Hori san, I'll take you to drink more wine if you tell me how to pronounce her name. Okay. Um, well, that's weird. Okay, we need to settle we that. We need to get to the bottom somehow. of this. Um, but yeah, I don't mind it. I, I think that the sprites are so animated and their expressions are so. Like, I can see their expressions in my mind's eye, even though it's like a teeny little little thing on the screen. Yeah. So then when I see it in like an animated cutscene, I'm like, yes, I, I, I buy this. I believe this. I like, I've seen this in my yeah. head, you yeah. know? Um, so I don't mind it. I do think there is like something to say about like bringing back some of this like FMV stuff. You know, we've seen it in some recent games, like Alan Wake obviously has a really good, or like any of those Remedy games have a really good way to integrate that. It can be cheesy, I know. Back in the early 2000s, we were all subjected to the cheesy FMVs, but I don't know. I feel like there's a way for them to come back, and I, I don't mind it in this game. Hmm. But you seem to be, to be of another mind about it. I, again, I think if they were to do kind of some sort of a remake or a remaster mm -hmm. of this, it would make, it would fit in a little bit better than it does oh, of course. with this. I, don't, I certainly don't. I think those are super well done, though. Yeah. Oh, it's so Toriyama-san, though. Those, those well, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's like his DNA is right. like so present in those. Mm -hmm. It, like, hurts me to watch them. Yeah. It's like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is a genius, you know? It's amazing. Well, I don't have too much more to add because I'm not as far along as you. Yeah. I've been plugging away on my trip. But I will say the PC version continues to hold up really well. Oh, good. I'm playing on the Steam Deck. When I got back, I did hook it up to a TV through oh. the dock, and it looks really nice there. Oh, wow. So, again, you know, really that version has a really bad reputation, but so far, I have not really had any major... I have some small quibbles with, like, the HUD and some stuff like that. Okay. Occasionally, like, stuff getting in the way of, of itself, but mm -hmm. nothing really like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I've stoop to playing this version of this game. Yeah. I've even seen some people in our community who, who are, you know, playing alongside us, which is really fun. They're like, I picked up the mobile version, and it's, it's, it's fine for what it is. That's good. Yeah. I, I would not play this game on mobile, That'd but... hard, yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, if, if that's, you know, the way you have to play it, then so be it. Yeah, that's right. I do like the 3DS touchscreen for this game. I use it quite a lot. Yeah. To, like, manage the inventory okay. and, like, you know, even some of the... You know, like in between battles when you got to heal and yeah. you know those little things. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Works well. I okay. forgot the touch screen is is quite nice <laughs> right? to have on that bottom screen. It, it's, yeah. it is it is very good. Any new street passes this week? No, I'm just gonna keep passes. asking you every week. I brought it around too. I brought it all around with me on my like walks and to the park and all that stuff. Nobody. It's very sad. Shoot. Very sad. Who do you have in your party right now? Well, I have Chrono Frog. I love frog. and. I'm going back. I really like Robo, but mm -hmm. there are some times where I need better healing. I know. Frog can heal. So, not as well as Marley, Marley, Marl. <laughs> we gotta get this Marley. figured out. We well, Marley can heal. She, I mean, that she. Isla can heal. Oh, no. A little bit. Do you know how to pronounce Isla's name? I think it's Isla. Okay, good. Oof. Okay, it could be Ayla. No, Isla. Isla. Yeah. A Y. With those Isla. names, I, I usually try and think of, like, how would you say this in Japanese? Yeah, it's Isla, I mean, right? I think I'm pretty yeah. sure it's Isla. Aya is a Japanese name. Aya is a Japanese name. Yeah. So it's got to be Isla. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah, she can heal, Frog can heal, Marley But you need, like, like a heal. big group heal or, like, a bigger individual heal. I kind of need her. Well, Frog has the so, group heal. 
but it's but not it's, big. It's enough. not fair. It's not that strong. So there have yeah. been some fights where I've swapped people. Yeah, I've kind of forgot you could do that. Just kind of like freely move people. It's and nice. I thought you had to go back to that like it's a little time end of time end thing, of time. but you, you actually yeah. don't. You don't. It's great. Right. I, I I swap people out all the time. Yeah. Sometimes I have one person just heal, so I don't. Burn away the ethers for the other. Yeah, person. you kind of. So I'll swap them into heal and this one back yeah, out. I mean, some fight, some fights like a lot of these enemies have counters that they'll constantly counter, or you're constantly. You kind of need somebody always healing. Yeah, I needed um, Luca to do a very specific skill oh. in a in a fight. Um, so usually I don't have her in my party very often, but I. I, I took her off the bench, brought yeah. her in for a fight, and she she literally had one job and she did that job. And yeah beat that boss, you know? So the game does a good job of like, again, like sort of letting you switch between, but I have, I always have frog. Yeah. I like frog. I, like frog I really like frog. But I also and really like Robo, but sometimes I have to take Robo out. I know, Robo I have to take out a lot because I really like Marley. And I really want the romance ending, so I'm just mm. trying really hard to to keep Marley in my party, but anyways. All right. Yes. All right, more games. Something more else games. I played on my travels. So I brought my Switch and Steam my deck? Steam Deck, and I ended up not playing the Switch at all, so it was kind of something to, I wish I had, didn't have to lug around oh, no. uh, all Deleted the way. I, I should have just left Montreal. it somewhere. No, I need it, but not, not then. Um, another game I picked up on one of the recent Steam sales is called Turbo Overkill. Mm -hmm. and Apogee. Yes, yes, Apogee. Apogee's got an interesting kind of history where they yeah. were involved in a lot of the big... Like you Duke know, Nukem. important PC games yeah. of the early '90s, like Duke Nukem and yeah, yeah. and Doom and all that stuff, and they're back kind of as an indie publisher. And this was a game that I'd heard a lot of over the past year, and finally picked up. And I'm glad I did it. It is one of the so-called boomer shooters, uh -oh. which means it is of the genre of a classic '90s shooter oh, FPS, nice. which means it's it's extremely heavy on action. It's very fast paced, mm -hmm. kind of like those. Classic Doom games, like a little bit secrets heavy. Okay, how where it's interesting. Like, where it's like you know, examine the environment and find the hidden thing, or and there's a lot of like find the key to get to the next area. So there are some kind of classic hallmarks of that genre. Another game in this genre I talked about a few months ago was that um, Warhammer. Yes. Bolt, Bolt gun. Bolt gun. Yes. I like this genre a lot. This, this genre is fun. Um, this game's really good. I'm, I'm really glad I started playing it. So it's set in this kind of, it's very cyberpunk. Oh, I like that. Yeah. But kind of more of like, a, like tongue in cheek. Right. Well, they do that well. They have like that kind of funny action. Right. Almost it's, like a '90s right. action movie. It's like, it's movie like partly kind of. serious, but partly very like goofy as yeah. well. And you play as this guy who has a chainsaw leg. It's called a nice. schleg, <laughs> and you can run around shooting, but you also, one of the unique moves that you can do is this slide where you put your leg out and you just chainsaw guys, Ooh. so you can go really fast. Yeah. And Something about the 90s and the chainsaw. They love chainsaws. We're very interested in the chainsaw They love chainsaws. The so that's a very fun and satisfying move, because you can't do, can't really do any other melee, you know, normally you can like bop somebody with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do any of that. This one, it's like you slide and you chainsaw. You chainsaw through a bunch of people. Into people. Yeah. Okay. But, but like I've been collecting a lot of different guns, and every gun has an alt fire, and they're all pretty fun to use, and everything is just super fast paced, like zipping around. Mm -hmm. And um, is the aiming hard? It has by default a little bit of auto aim, oh, that's good. Okay. so it's fine. But it's also like a very like prey and spray kind of game where oh, you're just okay. like, I'm just gonna vaguely shoot. Okay, and that's a, good because I'm bad at the aiming, and you, I, like, I need to. Like have you don't have to help. reload any of the weapons. Oh, like you okay. just that's shoot cool. until you are out of bullets. You know, okay, okay. You, you just, just hold down that trigger and button, the, and the ammo is everywhere. Okay, so you're not gonna run out. Like this is not Rainbow Six. Yeah, see, that's my problem. Yeah, is that I have like a problem. No, with no, the no, aiming. no, no. And you know the. All of the enemies like explode into guts if you like chainsaw. <laughs> you know, it's it's very over like the top, visually over the top, like that, yeah. and, and really fun. But it does have a lot of interesting depth to it. So just like Cyberpunk, you know, the screen where you do all your little augments and stuff. Oh. You're, so it actually has a screen that looks exactly like that. Oh wow! And you can buy all these augments that put into different parts of your body. So. I'm still kind of early, but I bought a couple for my chainsaw leg. I bought one that when I kill somebody with the chainsaw leg, I get a little bit of health back. Okay, I like which that. Which is good because sometimes they'll just like line up these enemies. That's like, here we go. Oh. <laughs> and you can get a lot of health back then. Or I have, and now I have another one where the, the, the dash moves 
faster mm. so I can go through them even faster. Is it like a roguelike where you keep trying to get as far as you... No, it's like... No, more, no, no. It's, it's, more it's so got like, levels and a progression. Okay, so it's got progression. And there's like a very light story that I'm not paying a ton of attention to. <laughs> it's more just like, you know, shoot everybody and, and get to the goal. It has some other some other interesting mechanics. Um, wall running. Oh. Like, in, like a Titanfall. I did not expect that. That's kind of fun. It's got good movement. How do you run on a wall with a chainsaw leg? You get like a special attachment for your other leg or so, I don't know. There's some part where you, you see him like pick something up and he like clicks it on his leg or something. Oh and now my. I can now I can run on these metal walls. Oh. I didn't expect that to be in this game. And all the traversal is really good. Like so there's the the slide, but you can also do a couple like dashes as well. Okay. So there's a couple where you need to like run on the wall, and jump, then and then dash, dash to get somewhere that's really far away. Because again, you're moving so fast, okay. you cover a lot of ground. Okay. So that's this game, the turbo part of it. This game really surprised me. This game's really fun. I heard, I think they said it's coming to consoles at some point in the future. They nice. have they have Nintendo Switch listed. Um, obviously, it's not out, but the you know Steam version is great. Ran great on the Steam Deck. Looked great, so I, I liked it. Nice. Yeah. Open Roads is another game that you yeah. checked out. What's this all about? I checked this game out on Switch. Um, this is an Annapurna game. It's very like you know one of those kind of artsy kind of story heavy games. I I played just the beginning of it. It has like a bit of a point and click kind of gameplay, but the premise is is that you and your mother are in your recently passed grandmother's home and you are like packing up the house and you're like encountering memories of your family um, through, you know, looking through your grandmother's things. Um, there's certain, There's definitely like a bit of a, something happening like some oh. sort of some sort of family thing that's I don't know what it is yet that's happened that you're kind of layer by layer uncovering um, you are basically I think a teenage girl you're playing as like a 13 year old girl and so you have the teenage angst <laughs> and you have you know moments with your mother where you get into those kinds of fights with your mother I'm very familiar with that <laughs> as, as, as one's been I've been a teenage girl um, it's kind of vibe though it has like a very you know interesting art style um, you start off in the main character this girl's room that she was she was living at her grandmother's house and it has like so many 90s things in it like it has like that like candied colored eye Mac oh know, yeah with, like yeah, the yeah. pink back right. right remember those um, she has like uh, DVDs that she had rented and it's like Clueless is the movie. So you're getting the sense of like the time period of when this is taking place and it was very nostalgic for me because that was like basically my childhood. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of that kind of happening as well, but very atmospheric, you know, I haven't gotten too far yet. Um, the thing, the one thing I will say is it does fall into a little bit of the trap of the point and click games, which you don't like, where it's like if you don't click on the exact thing, you can't, you don't know what you're doing wrong. Yeah. And you're just like, what am I supposed to do here? <clears throat> That's tough. Um, so I, w I was sort of like stuck a little bit in this one area where you had to like look for this book for your mom. And I like couldn't figure out what to do because you had to like click on this one item and you needed an item to open a door to this other thing. Um, so it does have a little bit of those pitfalls. Yeah. But otherwise, um, really beautiful game and it's very, you know, relaxing and, um, you know, nice to play. So nice. I'll keep checking it out, I think. Okay. One other thing for me, so as I was going through my backpack that I brought with me, I found that I actually had my play date in there in a, oh. little, in a little pocket that I had left it in before and I didn't realize, which is great because I had read this article, I think it was on Kotaku, and they were talking about basically the headline was like, oh, Tetris is on the play date. And I, I had like, Filed that away of like, oh, that that'd be good to get. Mm -hmm. So I finally had okay. the play date in hand. Uh huh. And I was like, let's get this Tetris. So I went back to the article and I found out it's not actually official Tetris. Oh. But it is a game that, except for the name, it is Tetris. Oh. So the name of the game is Quandino, and it's one of these games. Why are you looking at me like this? Because I'm very suspicious about what this is. What? It's Tetris. Uh huh. It's just not not official Tetris. And Bootleg Tetris? No, no, no. It's one of these games that you, it, it's, it's called side-loading. 
you know? Yes, you, it, I know what it's that It's not is. on the official Playdate store, but they do... Yes. You can, you know, load all sorts of things on that. Okay. So I got that. It cost like two bucks. Um, and yeah, it's basically Tetris on the Playdate, which is great. And Are you cranking away? You don't need to crank. Oh. I think you can crank to drop if you want to do the... It, it, you don't need That's to. That's weird. It's gimmicky yeah. in the worst possible way, but... Um, yeah, it's a perfect device for Tetris. It looks really nice. Just old, old black and white like the Game Boy. I was going to say it's like Game Boy. Used to be. Um, it's got a couple different modes. Uh, seems like they're going to keep updating it. So it's a really nice addition. Wow. To the play date. Quandino. Quandino. Yeah. A.K.A. Tetris. A.K.A. Tetris. Yes. Okay. Time for your Dragon's Dogma My 2 update. Dragon's I have not Dogma. I have not played this game at all since you last week. Because I, I haven't been around. Been Jeez. You didn't want to, I have a good you reason. You didn't want to remote play this thing on your I've phone? I've got so many games I'm juggling. So many device, how many devices can I bring on a trip? Well, you've wasted your space bringing a Switch. That's, <laughs> I could have put a, you could have put a PS5 a controller and done PS5 a remote play. And done yeah. a remote play, oh, well. yeah. Shame Too on bad. You. Um, I have been continuing on my Dragon's Dogma adventure. I think I'm like almost through the story. Oh, really? Yeah, the story's very short. It's only oh, wow. 20 hours. Okay. So I have been talking to that guy. <laughs> Who is the guy? What do you mean? The main quest guy. Um, Bar Bartlett? Bar the guy with the thing? Okay. The guy with the, whatever his name is. I don't know what you're talking um, about. You meet him at the very beginning. Yeah. And he gives you like all the main quests, basically. So, you know, it's just, the main quest is nothing. I, it's not like a big deal in this game. It's not like very story heavy. Yeah. You know, it's really about the exploration and doing stuff in the world. Um, but yes, I am following like most of the main quest things and if I do something kind of off, you know, it's, it's because I've run across some sort of side quest on my way to doing a main quest thing, which has happened a lot. It's like very Tears of the Kingdom in that way where you kind of get distracted off your main quest path by something yeah. happening in the world, like in a world of yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that, which I really like. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm still I'm still doing really good. I, I still really like this game. It hasn't gotten too hard yet. I have hired, I have get, gotten, I have benched M Bison. Sorry. Oh, I thought I was gonna get benched. No, 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 I can't bench. Whew, I was getting worried. And I have gotten another. See, the, the the thing is, is that I have a lot of rift points because you guys are using me. So I'm. You're just, cheating, basically, I'm cheating. is what you're doing. I am cheating. It's, it's not, totally it's cheating. It's actually not fair. Um, to you because I get a bunch of gifts and riff points <laughs> and then I can hire you like can buy the super a 72 high level, level yeah, pawn right, right. that like super rad me. I know. You know? <laughs> that's, that's the one you should get. I have him. Do you have him? I do. Oh good, yeah. He's like 99, level yeah. 99 and so I'm, I'm, I'm like breezing through. It's great. I oh. think it's good. It's, it's like a, it's, it's like your ultimate bodyguard. You just, you can totally. You can, yeah, you I'll go. go first. I'll go hide behind this tree. You, you go first. Yeah, and I, I'll, 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 I'll drop a healing spell from back there. <laughs> you know, don't mind me. Um, I have unlocked some new jobs, vocations, vocations. So you started as what? A, a mage. Just mage. Yeah. What? What does this branch out so to? So you, you can do the sorceress. Okay. Uh, which I didn't like as much. Um, I also tried the mystic spear hand. Oh yeah. Which I do really like. You do like that. That one's fun. That's it's the like one I played with that monk. preview. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. I like that a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. So I've been kind of doing that a little okay. bit. Okay. Like feeling that out. I do. I I really do like standing in the back and casting spells, though. What's so. the difference between mage and sorceress? Uh, mage has a healing spell. Oh. Sorceress has more all, of like all attack. All attack and, and buffs. Like a lot of like buff somebody's weapon so they can do a thing. Like yeah. make their weapon fire. So you want some weapon. healing. I like the healing. Do they have just a pure healing? The mystic spear hand has some good healing. But there's not one that's like you. You are. I don't think healed. there's like a priest. Yeah. Or anything like that. No. That might be hard in a game like that. It might be hard because then yeah. you can't defend yourself at you all. You eventually might need to do something yeah, besides heal gonna, somebody. Like, like drop a holy spell right. and run away, or right, what? Right, right, right. Dragon's not gonna not gonna fight itself, you know. So yeah. Anyways, um, it's fun. It's really fun. Good. This is a great game. I have. I. I continue to have no issues. They have well, you saying it's that short is is. Um, Exciting to me, actually. Many patches have come out since. You oh started. yeah, what yeah. what what has happened in those? There's like some patches where you can, like you were saying, you can turn off some of the stuff. The ray tracing? Did sure. you turn it off? Uh, no, I didn't do oh. anything. Mine's fine. So you've done nothing. I've done nothing, and nothing's happened the to me. The patches have come out, and nothing's happened. Okay. Yeah, but I've had no issues to begin with, so I don't know All what right. the deal is. But I'm playing on PS5. Yeah. I have had no issues. None of the things that people were saying were happening to them were happening to me. So whatever the patches are, the patches are out. If you need a patch, good. 
Hopefully that helps you. Well, then why even mention the patches if this is your update? I'm just saying. Why even say it? That they're out. And you have them now. Get out of here. Moving on. Last thing, another device that I did not have space to bring with me on this trip was the analog pocket. You brought a switch but not the analog pocket, how dare you? Well, the thing with the analog pocket is I would also need to track down and bring a stack of cartridges. That's true, okay. So, I'll but the good news is I have found all the cartridges. Oh. I have them. I have a lot of Game Boy Advance cartridges. I don't have as many Game Boy and Game Boy Color, so I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a list yeah, we gotta go to of the store. a couple <laughs> that I want to get. Yeah. But I have had a chance to just play around with it a little bit more. I do want I do want us to do kind of a dedicated video I on it to, yeah. at some point once I feel like I've properly put it through the paces. The game I've been most the two things I've been mostly playing with it is um, just original Tetris of like just like what is this the for thing? someone that hates Tetris? You sure like Tetris? Who said I hate Tetris? You said that you never liked Tetris. I your used to. I was... used to not like Tetris because of that reason. Because your sister. She would take over the TV and play Tetris. So as a result, I dislike Tetris. Turns out, I actually like Tetris quite a bit. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is a turn of events. What the, this is like a long time ago. What do you mean? But <laughs> Turn of events. Again, this is just like the baseline of like what is the gameplay experience and? on this thing. It's really good. I mean, something that I like about it is, and again, this is just on original Game Boy. There's a couple different like color, I don't even want to call them color palettes, but it's just like visual Presets, oh, presets, presets that you can choose from. Okay. And one of them is like the original puke green that's very like pixelated. Mm -hmm. There's another one that's for I think the Game Boy Pocket. There's one for the Game Boy Light where there's kind of a fake backlight thing. Oh. And then they have their own that is like a very clean. And we're talking about in Chrono Trigger, like they have this smoothing that makes it all the Vaseline. Smudgy. I don't like that. This is like a good version of that. This is good Vaseline. This is a good Vaseline. I wouldn't even call it Vaseline. <laughs> I don't I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it looks just like a super clean and crisp. Do you have it with you today? Present no, I don't. Damn. Presentation of these um, pixel games. So that's really nice. It I feels look at it. feels good in the hand. The other thing that I'm really excited for this is the Game Boy camera. I think we might need to do another video going now that we can actually see what's on the screen. Sometimes some of those Game Boy camera photos that we took were They're so really good. cool looking. But honestly, it was hard for us to do it because we were trying to take it. I was like, I could barely see anything well, it was like in the sunlight on the screen. Yeah. So this would solve those problems. We should do it again. I think we should. Next time we go somewhere interesting that has cool landmarks, we yeah. should we should take a couple. I hours think that's a good idea. And do a video with that. But yeah, all that stuff would look really great. So I still have a lot more to try out and test cool. out. But it's going, it's going well so far. Wow. So thank you again. Of course. Yeah. How fun. All right. News time. Yes. April Fools. Ugh. It's back with some nonsense. Silly April Fools. So on April Fools Day, this Hollow Knight Silk Song game page appeared on the Xbox. And people spent a lot of time wondering whether this was just an elaborate hoax or not. Mm -hmm. But it turns out it's actually real. Oh. So it got, you know, its ESRB rating and all of that. And this was, I think, one of the, the platforms where it did not previously have any sort of a presence. Right, right. But now it does, which kind of is, is leading people to optimistically hope that you know, maybe the game is coming soon. The game's been in <laughs> development for five years, which I cannot believe. It's longer than Metroid. Metroid Prime 4. Wow. That's incredible. Right? Metroid Prime 4, no. Is that longer now? Th that's a long time, too. Oh. But I think, I mean, they're both they're both long. But, yeah. th I mean, the, the question is, like, do you think they did this on purpose to try and time it to April Fool's, or is this just a lucky coincidence? I think it's a lucky coincidence. I think so, too. I don't think they would have done that. Right. I think they just whoopsied it and, and I think didn't it, realize it was April like, Fool's. I don't think the ESRB wants to be a part of your April Fool's no, joke. No, I like, don't think the they're ESRB... Just, they're just putting out the information when it's yeah. available. I think it's exactly. just a lucky bit of chance that it, Absolutely. it happened to go up on yeah. that day. But it, it is kind of... I do put this in the upper echelon of April Fool's things that had people really like, whoa, what's happening That's here? the thing about April Fool's now is that it's like a day where you don't know what's real or fake and it's annoying. Right. It's very annoying, and people are people has gotten jerked, you know, gotten jerked around before by stuff brands trying to be funny or whatever. But it's actually not funny. It's it's annoying. So I don't have a clue what this game could be. What they've been working on for five years. I really, I, I played Hollow Knight. I decided pretty early on this is not necessarily. 
for me. Did I you have you tried it? I played Hollow Knight. It was very difficult. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever finished that game. Oh no. Yeah, I'm sure you haven't. Yeah. It's it's Too it gets hard. pretty pretty challenging. But yeah. I, I am curious to just eventually find out what this game is. Yeah. What do you think it is? I don't know. Open world. <laughs> That's my answer. It's open world Hollow Knight. Open it's it's Grand Theft Auto it's, Six, actually. It's it's, it's um, actually Grand Theft Auto Six. It's Battle Royale Hollow Knight. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got a bit of interesting drama. There's only two news stories this week. Kind I of know. A light, light news some, week, but yeah, this, this is, this is like drama, drama, alert. drama Drama alert. So over at Square Enix, the longtime producer of the Dragon Quest series, Yu Miyake, is stepping down from that role mm -hmm. to take over a role overseeing mobile games. Does this name ring a bell to you? No. Excuse you? This is a person that we have met and spent quite a bit of time we with over the years. We have? Yes, that's why I pulled this story immediately. Who, what, Yu is, is somebody who accompanied me. Yuji Horii on all of his trips to the United States, which we played host to I definitely over remember the years. Yuji Horii. And was a really great guy. He always positioned himself as like the business manager for the Dragon Quest series. And had definitely been with the series for a super long time. It says he joined Square Enix, or he started with Enix, not even Square Enix, <clears throat> in 1990. And he worked his way up. He was the executive producer. So he's really one of these... You're Googling Yumi Yake, you're getting Yumi Yogurt. <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to look at his face, because I want to see if his that's, face... That's somebody else. He's this guy. Or this guy with the slime. Oh! Yes, Does yes, that yes, ring yes, a bell? Yes, 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 right. yes, 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 yes. So yes. he worked his way up, and he was one of these longtime collaborators, you know, obviously who Yuji Hori really trusted. Yes. And, you know, I think th there's some other, like, bits to this story of did this happen because the most recent Dragon Quest is not progressing well in development? I don't know if you completely... Just move this guy off the project that he's been on for decades. I he's know. been super successful because of that. There may be some other things around that. Some it sounds like they were doing some other shifting around, though, right? right? There, there was yeah. other restructuring at Square Enix. Right. That, you know, this was not just a one-off thing. Who knows? If you're Square Enix, maybe this is billed as, like, a huge promotion of, like, oh, this is the future. Like, this is where we're putting all of our eggs in the future. Like, we need our top guy to be maybe, on this. So yeah. I don't I don't want to get too deep into, like... Whether or not he was, was he, ousted. Was he fired? Was he was ousted? He, was he some sort of golden parachute Was he situation? whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, some people have pointed out the very tenuous position that Dragon Quest is in now mm. where, you know, this, this great team that they have is getting slowly disassembled. Yeah. So... You know, Toriyama-san has passed away. Um, Sugiyama-san, who did the music, he's passed away. Oh, no. Yuji Horii's still going strong. He's got a lot of, you know, people who have come up with him and know the series inside and out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Yumiake was, you know, on the business side, his close partner over all these years. And then moved it's off. A lot of, it's a lot of change Yeah. for a series that is very, you know, has a lot of tradition right. to it. Yeah. So I kind of feel bad for... Yuji Hori right now. Right, I was going to say. He's dealing with a lot of change right now. He is, and, and a lot of it is very personal change. Yeah. And, and then, of course, on the business side, that's tough, too, when you have this way of working on something, and then that all sort of goes away, right? Right, so right. that's tough, yeah. So, as somebody we know personally, wish him well, and uh, we'll definitely see what happens with Square Enix. But that's mm -hmm. not all. Uh-oh. Well, what's that? There's well, somebody uh, else here. My, my God, that's Yuji Naka's music. I hear him coming. <laughs> he Out of jail and into the Twitter? Had to, jumped in with this great tweet, which oh, uh, no. as translated, I don't know if this is a perfect translation, but he says, Square Enix's Dragon Quest manager Miyake transferred to boost the business per this story. It feels like it's finally happening. I hope he'll be gone soon because he's the kind of person who submitted a memo with lies with evidence to court. I've never met him, but the new president seems like a good person. What does it mean <coughs> by submitted a memo with lies with evidence? <laughs> so basically he thinks that you, Miyake, played a part in, in, his, in his downfall and his, his, his close call with jail. Because remember, Yuji Naka was oh. at Square Enix he had a cup of coffee with Square Enix. That's right. And it didn't go well. So he thinks that, again, he, he you know, was part of that. Drama? Maybe Yuji Naka should just cool it for a while. Yikes. Seems a little bitter. 
Seems a little bitter. That was a very strange addition to this story that happened like a,、yeah. a day or so after this first story hit. Of like,、yeah. oh, this is where like you know your mom tells you if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything. Keep、yeah. it to yourself. This is, could have been a keep it to yourself moment. It was very nice to us. He did not submit. Lot, he was a really a nice guy. He was like, he was like, you know, I. Like I'd love to hear like how things are going for you at Nintendo. Do you feel like your career is progressing? Like he he had a lot of very like thoughtful, like personable, nice, personable、yes. things. And obviously we, we don't we don't know him like for years and years and years. Yeah. But I came away with a very positive impression of that. Yeah.、Man. I I I don't know. I, it feels. I mean, I, I have no idea. I was not there. You don't even remember who he is, so you don't get to say. Okay, I don't. Get to say. <laughs> You're right. He could very well have submitted a memo with lies. I don't know. With evidence. With evidence, submitted a memo with lies with, with evidence. evidence. So it's like false evidence. It's like false evidence. Is that what that is? I, that's what I was asking he, you. Like, he like made, he made up evidence to court. Anyways, okay, okay, Yuji Naka. Well, we'll leave it to the Japanese yeah, courts to sort it out. Just figure that one out on your own. Whew, wow. Wow. That was a doozy of a news story. <laughs> About to get on to some questions from our community, and we get each and every question from. Our Patreon community, thank you very much.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very excited about the spoiler cast that's coming for Chrono Trigger. Yes, like we said, people are playing alongside with us. Yeah, and I think for this one, we'll do a little bit more of like polling the community, asking、yes. the community to yes. submit Share their, their thoughts, share their experiences with us. It feels、it's、like we have、fun. more people playing alongside than we had with、um, Final Fantasy or Like a Dragon, which、yeah. is which makes sense since it's on、uh, you know got more of a Nintendo. Background to it, but that's just one of many great perks of being a Patreon、mm-hmm. subscriber for us, Kit and Krista. Subscribe, please yes, pa- join us. Patreon.com/slash Kit and Krista. Check it out. First question is from Banana Bread Slice. Hey, Kit and Krista, in one of your podcasts, you mentioned that while working at Nintendo, you'd first learn about new games under the guise of code names. Can you reveal any memorable code names for games that are now released, or would the ninjas still go after you? Lol. N X. The ninjas are listening carefully to this answer. N X is a code name that was re- well, revealed revealed by Nintendo. Yes. So this falls under the category of things we cannot talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. I told you N X. That's I. I There we go.、That. Wow. Sh- breaking news. Um, I will.、Nintendo、I will、NX. tell you something. Oh boy. Now I'm worried. <laughs> in the bonus Q and A. Oh. Or maybe the behind the scenes. That's even smaller group. Huh. Okay. Behind the scenes is smaller group. Well, now the ninjas are listening to that too. Well, they better、Great. subscribe to the <laughs> One Up Club tier then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man. But yes, that is that、yeah. is the fact about that. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that we can talk about and feel comfortable talking about, but there's other stuff that's like that's that's、yes. flying a little bit too close to the sun, as they say. And X. That's definitely one of those. Kai X is next. Hi, dynamic duo. I just saw a tweet where Katsuhiro Harada, who is the head of the Tekken series. Yes. <laughs> Addressed an apparently large number of people <laughs> requesting Waffle House to be added as a stage in Tekken. What sort of strange location would you like to see added to Smash? <laughs> Because they would be ridiculous, would actually be fun, or for another reason altogether. I've got some great ideas. This is a Waffle House story though, with, with、um, Haradasan asking like, "I'm gonna ask just, just once, but like, what is、yeah. this?" <laughs> was really really funny. I thought it was hilarious. Um, oh my gosh! This is such a great question because there's so many fun things you could do. One thing that would be fun is to just add like, like a typical、um, office in Nintendo's office building as a stage. Yeah, I would like Reggie's said, office or something、oh, like that. Oh, that, that or would I would have said、hilarious. like the top of the NCL building. The top of the NCL building.、Really cool. Yeah. But we need、mm-hmm. the Super Nintendo World stage. Oh, we need that. Wouldn't that okay, be incredible?、Cool. You can、yeah. incorporate all the rides, all the stuff that's happening. Yeah, picking up the coins. Yeah, your thing going、the、off. Little, your little bracelet or whatever. Could make such a great level、that's、off、cool. of that. Yeah, that is my answer. That's a good one. Yes, I like that one a lot. Wow. Cosmic Crab asks, "Hi, Kit and Krista. For the past eight years, I've worked at a movie theater, and recently、oh. I got to thinking back on those years and have determined." That 2017 was the best year I had since working there. What would each of you say was your best or favorite year at Nintendo? Hmm, my favorite year at Nintendo. Probably not Nintendo's <clears throat> best year, but what was the year of the Super Booth? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that would have been 2014? 14 or 15? One of those years. I believe I remember 2015 as the absolute worst E3. Okay, that, then was, it was that, was, that was the then. Nuppets E3. Okay, then it was the E3 I think it was that. 2014. So 24, I'll yeah. pick 2014. Oh, interesting. Because that was the year where I really felt like Nintendo was definitely struggling from like selling the stuff, you know, selling yeah. hardware and, and, and selling things. And so they were open to fun things, you know, and that year with Super Booth was the first year we had like all those developers together in one place. And I just had this feeling that year that, you know, we all had this very collective mindset where everybody was just game to do anything. You know, we have nothing to lose. Yeah. So we're gonna have, from the tippy top of Nintendo, like Mr. Iwata to, you know, us, you know, we, we all had the same mindset, like let's just, Go out there and show people that we're still really fun and we're, you know, we can still do things. We can still, even though we know that the company's going through a hard time. And we did. That was a year where we ran around the show floor where Mr. Anuma was wearing a squid hat and shot me with a gun and I was laying on the floor. <laughs> that was the year where we had all those great photos with Mr. Awada and Reggie and Mr. Miyamoto. Oh, yeah. Um, was that the Triforce photo was that right, year, I right, believe? Right. There was the, you know, I have a lot of good memories, especially at that E3, about just having this sort of like, we're in a bad place, but we're going to make the best of it. And Nintendo had never been more open to trying something. And I, don't, I, I think, you know, it takes a lot for them to get back to that mindset. <laughs> it takes them to be losers to get back to that mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while it was not like the most fun year from a, business perspective I think it was a really interesting like place where I, I was able to you know just see the different side of a lot of people there which is pretty cool yeah yeah all the switch years were great for obvious reasons I would say I think I think it was 2010 was oh, it really 2010. good year so this was the year that we had first unveiled the 3ds okay and it may be a little forgotten now, but the 2010 E3, where we had the 3DS there for the first time, like people's minds were blown by this thing. Seeing the 3D. Yeah. Was we that had... the stage with the crazy Mario Kart? We did that Mario Kart thing on stage. What? Was that that E3? What are you talking about? Where we they had that very like high end video where it showed like the 3D effect. Was that that one? I don't know. Okay. But they had all you know all the girls with the tethered yes, systems came yes, up that that stuff, up, yeah. and they they had all of these great um, demos you know that were meant to show off what the 3ds was capable of, not necessarily games, mm -hmm. but all these great demos that they had made from scratch so that um, you know people really enjoyed. So the 3ds obviously went on to have a very middling to poor launch. Yeah, that was the following year, but I would say from that second half of 2010, it was like, oh, we got a big winner on our hands. Mm -hmm. People love this. We are going to have a smooth transition from the DS to the 3DS. So there was just a lot of optimism and good feelings, I think, within the company then, which obviously didn't necessarily happen. Yeah. But that, that half of 2010 was, was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. There are those moments where it does feel very hopeful. Yeah. Like on the cusp of a new console launch or something like that. Those years always felt fun at Nintendo because you just had like hope on the horizon. Like, oh, we have something new coming. We think it's going to be a hit. Um, we can't wait to see how people receive it. Um, whether it goes right or wrong is, is you know, a different time. But um, those years leading up to it is always fun. Yeah. Next, we have Kyle Gamer. In honor of the 3DS's legacy, what are your favorite designs for the system and which pre-installed game do you think was a hit? Um, what are the options? I'll just answer the question. <laughs> Since you seem unequipped to do so. What do you mean? So, specifically with the 2DS XL, oh, they introduced, yes. listen, they introduced some new technology where they could basically print you know, things of different shapes on the top clamshell. You don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a 2DS, I'm talking about a 2DX XL that has a clamshell. 
You're about to eat so much crow. Do you I remember? I have no idea what this is. Do you remember the metal slime 2DS yes, XL? I do remember that. That's the answer. Oh. Get out of here. The 2DS XL. Let's kick you off of this podcast. I forgot about that one. Of course you did. They also had the um, Hylian Shield. The Hylian Shield was one. good, yeah. People like that one a lot. I like the, the Metal the, the Slime. The Metal one. Slime. Was I don't think good. that one was released in the US. But that one was so amazing. It was like so, 3D, right? Yeah, it, it yeah, had, yeah, like, yeah. A it had like a little bump. It had like a bump. Right. So they, yes. they had, but specifically for that product line, they had a way of I doing those designs yes. that actually had texture and yes, volume yes. and whatever yes. on the top clamshell. I they remember didn't, that. They now. didn't do a lot of them, but they, they were all really cool. They, those were very cool. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. No one, no one ever made a furry 3DS. Stop with that. You don't get to answer this they question. They should make a Tanuki one with like a little tail. Stop. It'd be like a little Tanuki Mario 3DS with a tail. How cute would that be with little ears? Do you have another favorite design? I like mine. Which is the... Fire Emblem. Fire um, Emblem Awakening? Yes. Okay. What's so special about that? It's pretty. Good answer. <laughs> Let's move on. Jeez. Link has a question. Hey, Kit and Krista, a few years ago, YouTube made changes to videos deemed made for kids in response to an FTC complaint over the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, COPA for short. There was a hugely negative reaction from both YouTubers and viewers, so I was wondering, did this also create a stir within Nintendo? Was COPA something you had to deal with outside of YouTube? Um, yes, is the, is the answer. Oh my God, the COPA. So for people who don't know, the United States government fined YouTube a lot of money. A lot. Over how they were basically treating videos that were made for young children. Mm -hmm. Right. And as a result, YouTube had to make all of these changes. Now we have like YouTube Kids, which is a whole dedicated ecosystem where mm -hmm. like kids are not just taking an ad. There's like, you know, certain criteria for, for videos right. that can get on that. And, but but something now, whenever you upload a video to YouTube, you There's do a box. you have to say, not made. For is this kids. video made for kids? Yes or no? No. Right. Yeah. Or and whatever. You, or yes. <laughs> and if you say it is, yeah. Then there's like a limited limited number of things that can happen to it. Uh, like you know, certain number of you know types of ads can be run on that certain mm -hmm. amount of ads. Yeah. Other things like that. Um, for us. You know, being a all ages brand, we had this huge, huge YouTube channel. It was a big concern, right? Of like, oh no, we don't want to be in violation of this new thing. And, and YouTube right. told us, they're like, you have until this date to like figure to, it out to go through your stuff and get it figured out. And there was a guy at the Nintendo legal team who was kind of in charge of all it of this stuff. It was a nightmare. And I was working yeah. with him. And he was like, yeah, we have to, we have to find a way to flag, you know, what we think it is the videos are and, and set those and, and, you know, get that taken care of. And this was one of those things where when you talk, when you would explain this to people, they'd like look at you. Blankly. They had a hard time really understanding what yeah. was happening. So we tried to like create a team of like, all right, maybe if we chunk up because ultimately somebody had to go through every and video check the box. and check every video right. and, and understand the criteria of what would be for kids or not for kids mm -hmm. accurately because again it's like we don't want to get fined no bazillions of dollars for this this is really important but when you would talk to people about this they'd be like i don't understand or what you're saying. or this yeah. i don't believe that this is actually happening <laughs> which was sometimes the case like i don't believe you that like this this is so bonkers like this can't be what the reality is when it totally was yeah so guess what i had to go through and they check every the boxes? single video in the Nintendo YouTube channel, oh, no. look at it and make the determination. <laughs> How many videos? Every single video. How many? Thousands. It's thousands of videos. Oh, this took me nonstop several days of work. Why was I doing this? I don't know. You were the only one that understood it. Oh my gosh. One of the most ridiculous things I've ever had to do. You had to check the but box. it was done to my standards. It was done correctly. And no one got fined. Nothing happened. And the right videos got noted as such. Yeah. There were there were not surprisingly very few that were like specifically made, made for kids for young kids. Yeah, man, how annoying. But now, but then Nintendo now has the 
play Nintendo YouTube. Well, they had channels. it then too. Yeah. And everything that's on there is, is, made for, is I was specifically say, made for kids. Everything on there is made for kids. So you just check yes. Right. To right. All those but boxes. but the, on the main channel, there were some things that were also like could could have been considered iffy. So that was right. the channel I had to go through. <gasps> Thousands of videos starting oh, in like two thousand. Oh my gosh. Like literally ten years of videos. Mm -hmm. that's go through rough. it all. That's every every single one. Oh my gosh! I can't believe that. <laughs> can't believe it. That's wow. crazy. Yes. Paul Gale's next. Hi, Kit and Krista. Back at E3 2011, Nintendo let us play a co-op Legend of Zelda demo for Wii U. It was stunning, and I'm looking forward to that visual style being used one day. What are your thoughts on the demo slash that graphical take in a future Zelda game? Thanks. Now, I'm getting thrown off by Paul calling it a co-op demo. I don't remember it being a co-op Because I don't remember demo. there being any co-op elements to it. I remember it. you walk into, like, a Temple of Time. It was a Twilight Princess style. Yes. There was a big spider involved. And, right. And I think you had very minimal camera control. Yes. You don't have any camera control, I don't think. There was no camera. It was you, you were hands, on, on, hands off. And on rails, almost. Yeah. I think it was... I think... You, I could be wrong, but I think you could very slightly move, oh, the, maybe ca I just didn't move, move the camera around. I don't, I don't know. I could be wrong about that, but I don't remember it being co-op. But anyway, yes. That that was one of the... Yes. We had another visual demo. It was like a bird. A tech demo. A bird flying through Japan. Do you remember that yes. one? Yes, I do. Where it was, it was meant to show the, the graphical, graphical capabilities right, of, of the Wii U. So those yeah. were the things that we would have. We'd bring people in. Like, this is the Wii U. Let, us, let me show you what it's capable of. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Yeah. What do you think? Mm-hmm. It was neat. I think it was. It looked very cool. great. Yeah, I like that, that that graphical style a lot. Yeah, that's like the dark Zelda style that I think a lot of people are wanting. Yeah, um, that we haven't gotten in a very long time, and yeah, I, I think if Nintendo could, you know, develop something of this dark fantasy style, if the hardware, the next hardware is is going to be, you know, much more powerful, and can run something like that, that would be great. Obviously, those tech demos are not games. Mm -hmm. So basically you can put all the resources of the system into, into making, making nice graphics. Video. Yeah. So I don't know at what point you can have a game that you can actually play that yes. would look like that. Right. I don't know. But yeah, I'd be down for that. I mean, it's possible. We've seen, you know, obviously like other, you know, PS5, PC games that have that look. Yeah. So if, again, if the, if the, Hardware is powerful enough, I think. So Zelda's coming to the PS5, got it. Zelda is coming to the PS5. Great. Z Zelda is the next like Can't Elden wait. Ring DLC. Can't wait. Coming to the Exciting. PS5 exclusively. All right. Yeah. I want to play as that bird, though. When I get oh, to play as that bird. bird. Yeah. Get back to your street view. I like the bird. Your, your Wii U street <laughs> view. <laughs> Last question's from the Keggers. Hello to you both. I mean no disrespect. Whoa. But... You sure do love to mention live service for games that have absolutely no business being live service games. Mario Kart and Animal Crossing, to name a few. Can you change my mind? How would these work as live service games, especially given that it can ruin a perfectly good game slash brand? This is just one man's opinion. Mm. Yeah, I think what, what, at least what I mean We by also it. mean no disrespect, but. <laughs> but, we're gonna call you out right now, I'm just kidding. Um, what I mean is, I, I think what we all want to see especially with a game like Animal Crossing, is continued Animal Crossing support. And then we also saw this, how this could work with Mario Kart, with all of these booster packs that yeah. they were doing, where it does feel like you have a reason to go back to this game after you've kind of finished playing with it right. or whatever. Every single time there was a new booster pack, I think all of us went back. We booted that Mario Kart right back up and we wanted to play these new courses. We wanted to, you know, play together again. Um, Animal Crossing, we were just talking last week about New Horizon and how it was a little unfortunate that Nintendo sort of stopped supporting this game. Um, I, I hate to call it like live service because, because I think that has a bad, uh, can have a negative connotation. You're going to buy the Animal Crossing Battle Pass. Right. I got to have my skins. <laughs> Isabel is in a Halo skin in my Animal she's Crossing. She's flossing now. She's flossing. Right. Yeah, I got I to gotta buy her these dance moves. Um, I, I don't want it to be that, but yeah. I want something, I want a game, especially with these types of games, Mario Kart, Animal Crossing, I would say Splatoon would be also in this mix, Yeah. where Nintendo can constantly, consistently be updating these games with new content. I'll pay, you know, I'll pay for the booster pack or I'll sign up for a membership or something like that. If I wouldn't, if I could know that 
you know, I would be able to come back to this game for new content every couple months. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's what we mean by, you know, live service for these types of games. Yeah, I mean, it's honestly not far from what they were doing with something like Mario Kart or Splatoon, where, especially Mario Kart later on, where they figured out with the booster passes, like, just, you know, have this stuff ready to go, mm -hmm. release it on some sort of a regular interval. I think they could also consider some sort of, like, limited time sorts of events that are yeah. happening, where, you know, it, it, it could be, you know, in Mario Kart, like, tracking... You know, some sort of, like some sort of ongoing tournament that's happening. Yeah, sort of what they do with the for the full community, right? Yeah. Right. Or some sort of a weekend thing that they do, or some sort of a game mode that comes and goes, just to give people a reason to come back and keep playing and keep mm -hmm. it fresh. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely not thinking of like the full Fortnite implementation. So I don't know what if, if there's a better name for it than live service, Maybe but it's an ongoing game. Definitely not, really... not a dead service. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, like now, Animal like, Crossing, like it is now, has become. Yeah. So you know, they'll come up with some sort of Nintendo way to do it, but I right. do think that it's a smart path for them. Yeah, yeah. totally. Those are the questions. Oh boy, we made it. All right, should we shout out some of our wonderful Patreon community members? Yes. Okay, let's start with our final boss, the best boss ever, Aaron Hash. There he is. Dun, da, da, dun. Go, Aaron. Um, okay, superstars, here we go. Ben Icorn. Mara Mayhem. Ivyverse. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Roy Eschke. Switching it up, underscore. VGM Life. Uh, Link the Hero of Winds. Angela Bycroft and her Pig Molly. Thomas O'Rourke. Kyle LaBeouf. Roberto Nieves. Frederick Ulf Conradson. Andrew Uhaz. Chili. Bruce Dash. And Simon. Oh boy. And here we go with the one-up club. A. Ron Burgundy. Ale Alejandra. Archimedes. Astro Dev. Awesome 46. Bad Moon Horizon. Ben GB. Bookum Dano. Bookishly Fab. Brad SF56. Brandon Cavapil. Sorry. <laughs> Brooke Obscura. Brovac Novak. Called the Space Cowboy. Cameron. Chadir. Chelly Squirrel. Chris Cube. Christopher Lay. Captain Alex. Crim Cat. Cristobal. C Roper 17. Doxa. Doinko. Elite Peach. S Barts 50. Fart Pre 69. Furbound. Fernie and Jess Forever. Fox Deploy. Garrett Hullfish. Garth the Wolf. Gartooth. Heroic. Iris Marin. Jay Rando. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jerry 92602. Jesse Hernandez. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Collette. Jordan Hemmerly. Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Justin Leminger. Kawa 2796. Keith Kwan. Kevin Delane. Kilo Kibo. Christobia Party with me. Kyle Gamer Very Rookie. Kyle Kretzer. Lazy Cat for Coffee. Lex. Lit. Macho Potato. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mad Dog 5981. Magnificent Easy G plus Callie Marie. Marky Man 64. Mario Man 392. Mecha Dragon 101. Medallion. Megan. Michael Cravens. Mikey. Mr. Ryan 07. Modemania. Mr. Andy Pond. Mr. Beans and Dip. MSN Poke Gamer. My Tram. Nasir. Nathan Burkhart. Nayef E. Ninja 11. Panda Buns. Panky. Posse Pace. Paul Gale Network. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Raver. Rain Tech. Record Rumble. Rob Osborne. Rocks. Rianetta. Sakura Sky. Sharif Jackson. Sheer Cold Vanilla. Shinryu. Schmiggles. Slowbro. Schnazzle. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citrone. Tales of Lake. Tay 120 and 64. Teal Fox 64. The Kagers. The Shark Among Men. Tom is Alvarez. Three Rivers. Timmy, Timmy V. Topher Schmofer. Tor Cheeks. Totally Joe Ed. Travis Torline. Trajawi. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tusku. Tyler Geist. Video Game Stupid. Vig Mictor. Viridian. Virtual Bot. Weed Kingdom. WG Grizzy. What Up Khalil. Why You Why You. Wicked Davy. Will Johnson. Zelgra. The Patty. And Zroid. Oh boy. I do want to shout out the Shark Among Men who started up something very fun on our Discord, which yeah. is like a daily activity so for everybody to uh, check out. The so. daily activity over the weekend was everyone draw their best Kirby. And people took to Mario People Paint, did a great job. Mario Paint. That's right. To draw the Kirby's. And then the artwork that came out of this, incredible. I was so impressed. I did not participate in that one for obvious reasons. I'm, a, I'm an onlooker. <laughs> I was like, wow, people are like good. They're like talented. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, if you would love to join our wonderful Patreon community, we are at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. You guys, our current Patreon community, are making this podcast and everything we do on this channel possible. So thank you so much. 
If you happen to be watching on video, you can go ahead and subscribe. You can give this video a thumbs up. You can also leave us a comment. And if you're one of our great audio listeners, you can also subscribe, leave a five-star rating, and a written review, if you please. And we're on the social. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Threads. That's all. Okay, bye. Bye.